Hello and a very good morning to you. You're watching Sewing Street and I'm Debbie Shaw and we are going to be live here. For the next four hours we're going to do a bit of bag making, we're going to do a lot of quilting. Sally Stevens is with me in the studio so um, we've, we have guests as well. Um, now then, if you're brand new to us, welcome along. You can get in touch with us if you like. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you just want to come and say hello, I'm new uh, or hello, I'm old, whatever you like. Uh, we have two way, oh, if you, <laughs> oh do you know, it's an odd day again isn't it it's an odd day today it's, well, it's Thursday I'm, I'm I was driving into work this morning thinking I'm like what am I doing I'm not really here on a Thursday so who's here Thursday morning come and let me know Facebook you can uh, drop us a message if you like on our Facebook page which is Sewing Street TV so I'm not on the fans one I've got the other Facebook page open right now so um, do we have the regulars on a Thursday I don't I don't even know I don't know, we've got Maura, we've got Pauline, now we've got Wendy, and um, we've got Ange from Yarmouth, have we got Dawn, are we all, are we all here, have we got, have we got uh, Artilad, have we got um, Alan, are you, I, I don't know, I don't know on a Thursday. You can drop us an email if you like, it is studio at sewingstreet.com. So again, questions, comments, it would, let me know you're there, I don't even know if you're there on a Thursday, it's just, it's an odd day. Because you're here nice and bright and early at eight o'clock in the morning, we bring you a special discounted offer. And today we're looking at a really pretty fabric bundle. So we reduce the price for the duration that we have the stock or till it sells out or until the end of play today, then the price goes back up again. So you have one and a half meters of fabric for nine pounds 47. And this is Lewis and Irene. Um, so this one's Lewis and Irene. So we have the um, dragonflies. You know what I like about this? They don't leap out at you as dragonflies. So if you wanted to mix this with another patterned fabric, it's not going to argue. And it's such a lovely, warm, sandy colour. These are 112 centimetres wide and half a metre in length. And then we have the spot, look at that aubergine spot. A nice contrast, isn't it? They, they, they do kind of go together. Um, and again, it may be uh, bag linings if you're adding to your stash, maybe. But that's a lovely, pretty fabric. All 100% cotton. And then finally, we've got your solid. Um, and again, half a metre by 112 wide for £9.47. Now, even if you don't use them all together, you've got a great price for three half metres of fabric. And I'll just show you how much you're going to get in one of those, just so you have an idea. Is that you've got two cushion cover fronts there for quite large cushions as well, um, or three complete cut, well, whatever you like. But a great way to um, to build up your stash and have colours that are a little bit more unusual, maybe no matter what you're doing with them. Now you'll see at the side of your screen as well. It says three ninety five postage all day. So that means if you order now and you'll pay three ninety five for your postage and then if you come back later on and you think oh I wanted I wanted some pins I want some scissors I'd like a rotary cutter or a sewing machine we're not going to ask for any extra postage so it's a one-off payment of three pounds ninety five then anything else you order throughout the day is in effect P and P free and that goes all the way through to midnight tonight and it doesn't have to be just something that we have on the show live it can be anything that we have on the website or that you see in any repeated shows after we've finished here as well so that's a great offer isn't it right under 10 pounds that is what three pounds something each three pounds th uh, 15 each something like that which is if you're thinking about fat quarters that works out at one pound and five you'd normally pay you three pounds and something for a fat quarter wouldn't you so again you've got great value for money there Right, we have got so locked up. It's Thursday, it's just weird. It's been weird being here on a Thursday. I went all chicken then. <laughs> I've been Texan, I've been posh, I've been Australian. I don't know why, but just sometimes these random things pour out of my mouth. And today it seems to be chickens. I, I don't know. Okay. So we put together a quint, a quint. <laughs> Thursday. I wish it was Sunday. Um, a quilt um, package for you. 
So um, it's actually the, the style of the quilt that's behind me here that Sally made, but this is in a different colour option. We do have this one for you too. So two colour options for you to choose from. Um, so this is all Moda fabrics and we've got solids as well. So the lovely colours, aren't they? They're so rich. So these are fat quarters and there are eight of those in total. And then four meters of, oh the butterflies, they're so pretty. Um, and then four meters of your solids and of course you've got your cream fabric there as well. For 65 pounds and 99 pence. And of course you've got your pattern so that you can make said quilt as well. So Sally's going to be making up um, one of the blocks from that later on as well, or later on, in a bit, soon. Any second now. And the quilt behind me, I, I, this is so pretty, isn't it? I love the colours on this one. They're so so fresh and summery and spring-like and, and actually quite neutral as well. If you're making something as a gift, this isn't one of those prints. Oh, look, chickens. Um, <laughs> it's it's not going to kind of interfere or argue with uh, with different colorways and I, I do like that gray I like the gray and the cream it looks really classy um, so these are your fabrics brand new collection but it's the first time we put this together in a project and little strawberries so these are your fat quarters there's your flowers and your chickens okay And then your greys, metre of that, and then you've got your creams as well. So in total, you've got um, four metres of fabric, and again, your pattern is included. So that's all those. Um, have a look on the website for anything else that you might need. So when you go to sewingstreet.com, um, it'll take you to Jewelry Maker's website, so don't worry about that. That's where we are at the moment, till we have our new website and our new studio. And um, Sharon's message, morning Sharon. She says, morning. Oh, she's in, she's in a PJs with a brew. Oh, thanks for sharing. Looking forward to seeing what's on Sewing Street today. Oh, we've got lots for you today. She's having a lazy Thursday. Should we, should we have some rules for a Thursday morning? We normally have rules for a Sunday and a Monday morning, so I think we should, um, I think we should set the rules for, um, for Thursdays as well, if this is going to be a common occurrence. Um, Boris says, two metre distance between you and the vacuum cleaner, two metre distance between you and the sink, but you can get very, very close to your sewing machine, just for four hours this morning. That's my uncle Boris, not, not the Prime Minister, of course. But it should be a rule, it should be a rule, I'm thinking. Um, so you have a look on um, summerstreet.com, you'll see um, a video, well it's not video, it's live, um, of what's actually happening now, but underneath that are all of the products that we have for you in this hour, everything that's going to come up in the next three hours after this one, and then you can go into the different categories as well and take a look at anything else that you wanted to order. If you prefer to order on the phone lines, you can go to 0800 001 and that's a free UK-based um, phone number, so you, you can have a chat if you want to, they're very nice people. Um, okay, so shall we have a look at um, maybe how we're going to order if you are new to us and then we'll get Sally in and we'll get some sewing done. So it's over to Vix. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping.
So it's Alice with us again. Welcome back again. Oh, you're all organised with the labels and everything. Yes, I'm a labeller. <laughs> um, with the quilt, is it? It's just one block, really, isn't it's it? It's one block, and for this size, which is called the lap size in the instructions. Lap size. Yes, it's I know. It's a big lap. It is a big lap. It's sixty. Oh, hang on, I'll tell you. It's sixty-five inch square. Wow. Um, so that's what this kit will make up, which is sixteen blocks. Okay. Um, there, are, there are instructions in the pattern book for three sizes. Each is exactly the same method. It's just that for the baby quilt, there are just four blocks. The one we're doing, there's 16. And then for what they call the bed size, I think there are 30. Yeah, 30 blocks. Okay. And, and fabric, I, I love the fabrics. I said when you first came in with it this morning, that's, it's so pretty. Yeah, um, they're, they're a lovely mixture. They are, the, they? This one's got lots of florals little animals the um the one with the chickens on it has also got little hairs butterflies strawberries little chicks little baby chicks and they just all go together so well flowers butterflies love it i, I just think it's a really lovely combination it but, is you know, let, let alone it's chickens and strawberries but i just think it's so pretty and when i first saw it i thought oh gray i'm not so sure about that but as you said when it starts coming together yeah it really accentuates the starry shape of the block and as you said it's relatively neutral so if you're giving it as a gift or yeah um you want it for just a, a room where maybe you change your decor from time to time then it really works i think it needs it needs the gray doesn't it because yeah. the the outstanding color if you take the gray away is just that very dark blue yes and the gray kind of balances it, it does, does that yes it's it, it it draws it all together yeah. basically but there are different ways you could assemble the block if you wanted to you could have the same on the inside as on the outside there okay. but i've just mixed them all randomly just to show you the how that works um and i'll show you when we come to making the blocks other ways you could do it but you could for instance put um where are we those little flowers you could have those flowers in the center as well oh and there's and it completely to do that. completely changed yes yeah. because for for each each of these fabrics will make two blocks okay one lot like that and the center and a second lot like that in the centre. So, so if you made um, a, a smaller quilt, you, you, they'd make nice matching cushion covers as well, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. And if you were wanting to to make this as um, the little baby quilt, you could get, make four out of oh. what's here. Because a lot of people like to make them for little charity baby quilts and whatnot. Yeah. And um, yeah, so you could get four if you wanted to out of the kit. And with the instructions, how, how did you find those? Yeah, very good. Very good instructions. Um, it's a lady called Lou Orth which um, is not a lady I've come across before, but um, her instructions are very good. And being a sort of pattern writer myself by trade... You just spin you it around. Can, so it's oh, sorry, we're the other way around, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, sorry, I can't get used to the, um, the overhead being the other way around. <laughs> so, yeah, very clear. It shows you what you're, you can make and the supplies, which we're making this one for the lap quilt. Each block is 15-inch square when it's finished. And you use... Each fabric makes a center and circle, the um, outer ring times two. Okay. So we then go to the cutting side. Um, that's all explained again in great uh, in great detail, but it's very very simple. Tells you the numbers to make. I think it took me possibly a little longer to cut out than it did to sew. In fact, because um, there are lots of pieces, but don't be put off by that. It's quite relaxing. I find it quite relaxing. So are you um, rotary cutter ruler and mat for cutting everything out? Yes, you need a rotary cutter and a mat. And I have here a rotating cutting mat in case um, you want to use one of those. It does help when you're working with small pieces, but it's not essential. Okay. Okay, so the blocks themselves, I'll show you on the one I've got here. It has a centre large square. There are four oblongs of background fabric four corners of your alternative print fabric and then eight of these points and, the, and eight the, of the a contrast. very different color to the previous one isn't it and this yeah. time you've got the that, that the deep burgundy, burgundy that yeah. really stands out yes and this is all mode of fabric remember it is and it's, it's i think it's called beau papillon the mode of fabric so again that's butterflies it's got a lot of butterflies in it 
Okay. Right. I've just got some hellos to do. Yeah. Oh. Uh, morning, Kirsty. She says, morning, Debbie. Bright and cloudy here in Wellingborough this morning. Uh, morning, Morag. Uh, morning, Debbie. I am sort of watching. I'm on call. She ans uh, answer emergency buttons for the elderly and vulnerable. Oh, uh, I've been out most of the night, snuggled up on the couch, watching. Sorry if I fall asleep. If you start <laughs> to fall asleep, Morag, I'll, I'll give you a prod. <laughs> if that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you awake. Don't worry. Jo, my son works um, over overnight shifts Ooh. so as I'm leaving this morning he came with a good night <laughs> um, morning Claire she says morning to Debbie the team and the viewers I'm looking forward to see what you have on offer today she's made a dress um, and she's she's making herself some linen shorts Ooh, today nice. that's very nice making your own wardrobe okay where do we start I'm not then? a dressmaker but I'd like to I'd like to have a go you're not a dressmaker no. I thought I thought you would have been no, school put me off dressmaking for life. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't put me off sewing for life. Do you know, um, I hear that so often. Um, mm. Like really, really strict teachers that will make you unpick if you've got one. Yeah, one that's right. And yes. And I think I mentioned last time I was on, the first thing I had to make was a pair of shorts, which <laughs> just, just so wrong. <laughs> I have made some skirts but uh, and a couple of dresses, but that's about it. Right. So we start by cutting out all our, our pieces. We need um, for, it, for the for the for the center of the blocks. We need these five and a half inch squares. They go in the center, and you cut two of those so that you can make two blocks. We have our oblongs, and we have three and three quarter inch squares in both the print fabric the burgundy or the grey, and also the background fabric. Right. And then we have our corner stones. These strips, long strips, go on the side and bottom of the block so that when we join it together, the stars appear to be floating on the quilt rather than okay. butted up together, which is very helpful when you're trying to get points to match because it just makes it a little bit, a little bit more yeah. flexible, a little bit more flexible. So the first thing we're going to do, get my, here's my little toolbox. With, we with your name on everything. Oh, my name is on everything, <laughs> which is a good job because I left that behind last time. So we took care of it. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forget my head if it was loose. I should probably forget my cardigan this time because that's over there. <laughs> so we start with these three and three quarter inch background squares. And on each of them, you need to draw from corner to corner a pencil line. You can use any marker, it doesn't matter, but um, it's just for a guideline for cutting when we've sewn. When to start making these half square triangles, which are these, these little chappies here, we take one of those and one of these squares, background squares with the line drawn across it. And these, if you're using the background fabric with the print, it needs to be right sides together. But with the solids, it doesn't really matter too much. So we can pin that just to secure. And then we're sewing a quarter of an inch either side of that grey line, that pencil line. And do you have to be really accurate? You don't this? have to be really accurate with that, as long as it's a quarter of an inch or less. And in fact, one of the tips she gives you in the pattern is to always use a scant quarter inch. So by scant quarter inch, we mean that it's less than a quarter of an inch. And the reason for that, I, I always use a scant quarter of an inch anyway, because you'll find that by the time you've stitched something, folded it and pressed it, you'll have lost maybe a millimetre, but across the size of a whole quilt, that's quite a bit. So I always use a scan one, which is slightly narrower. That means that whether or not you've got a quarter inch foot on your machine, you need to make sure your needle is moved across to what for you is the quarter inch or scan quarter inch measurement. Okay. And the way I would do that is just with a bit of scrap fabric, do a test and make sure your needle's in the right place. I tend to work with the needle as far right as you as you can go, um, 
But if you're doing that, make sure you've got a foot that will let you move your needle to the right, <laughs> otherwise you'll, you'll rapidly break your needles. So I'll just sew a couple here. It's a quick machine, isn't it? It's very quick. <laughs> very I like quick. a quick machine. I haven't used this machine before either, so that's going to be good fun. Oh, it does things for you. I, I, I don't know why, but it's just sprung to mind. I'm imagining, I'm, I'm picturing meerkats going, automatic! Because <laughs> it <laughs> does everything for you. Because the foot actually goes up and down when you start to sew, so you don't need to do that. And <laughs> so we've sewn now either side of that line. And next thing to do is to cut that in half along the drawn line. And you have made yourself two half square triangles. I think I watch too much TV. I'm hearing why meerkats. It's an advert. It's an advert on t telly. <laughs> So you, you, you press to the dark side, or do you press open? I press normally to the dark side, but I can't see pressing. Oh, I oh. can. I can. Excuse me. There's the iron down there as it well. It is. I've got the iron. And that is no on. Sorry for bobbing about. We, we do it all the time. <laughs> In we, the we, new enormous studio, oh, oh, this yes. will be fine, yes. won't it? Yes, I'm um, looking forward to the swimming pool. Yeah, oh, the swimming pool's <laughs> in now. Um, Hannah, producer, did request a planetarium, so that's that's holding them back a bit at the moment. <laughs> and do we get a massage in between shows Absolutely. and things? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so I am pressing to the dark side. And the reason we do that is just so that if you're working with a light fabric like this cream, you don't see the seam showing but I find really and truly with um, a, a decent wadding underneath, it doesn't show too much at yeah. all. So I wouldn't worry too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've pressed those to the dark side. Morning, Dawn. Dawn's with us. She says, morning to my two favourite ladies. Oh, go oh, on. Thank you. Bet you Hello, say that Dawn. to all the ladies. I um, <laughs> thought I'd lost a couple of days and I'd woken up on a Sunday. Phew, thank goodness. It's a bit, it's a bit weird on a Thursday. I'm, not, I'm normally at home. Uh, morning, Nova. She says, morning, Debbie and team. Love my oh. first dress. Oh, yes, you had your class, didn't you? Um, so fired up for sewing at the moment. She says, fab show as always. Morning and happy Thursday, everyone. Morning. So we started with three and three quarter inch squares, which we've sewn together, trimmed uh, down the centre and we've pressed them. So now we need to square them up to three inches square. So I've just got a little tiny ruler here. So the best way to do this, if you have um, almost any ruler, will have a 45 degree line on it. Um, so line that up with the diagonal and then we're just going to trim this. I, I like the way that they're a little bit bigger when you trim them down rather than having to, to sew Absolutely. the exact size. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a great believer in just, I mean, you don't waste a lot. And I'm a great believer in trimming down to size because you can't make it bigger. Yeah. yeah. Um, and depending on your own machine and your quarter inch and how you sew, and indeed the thickness of the thread, it can make a slight difference. So, so would you use um, 58 thread? Uh, yes, usually. I, I use the Gutterman thread normally, um, but it does vary. I normally like a, a finer thread for piecing. Because again, when you, when, you, when you press it, the thread will actually take up a little bit of, just a fraction, yeah. a fraction of a millimetre. But as I say, over a large quilt, it can... It can add up. And would you use cotton or polyester or a mixture of threads? Um, I'm using polyester at the moment, but I like cotton. Um, it really depends on I, if I've got the I right colour for the job. I don't, I was going to say, I don't pay too much attention to be honest, because like, yeah. a lot of cottons are mercer size, um, so they don't shrink and they're colour fast and polyester's strong and it's not shiny like you expect. I, I tend to go for the right colour. Yeah, I do. And... Um, it used to be people would say that if your 
working with cotton fabrics, you should work with a cotton thread. With polyester fabrics, a polyester thread. Um, I think that came about because in the olden days, polyester was like cheese wire. Yeah. And it would um, potentially cut into your cotton fabrics after a period of time. Oh. I don't find it does that anymore. I, I've, I've made quilts now since I was about 14 years old. I haven't got one that's fallen apart. And I have used some really cheap, nasty threads, <laughs> which I wouldn't recommend because the, the cheaper and nastier they are, they still sew, but you'll find you end up with so much lint in your machine <laughs> yeah. and fluff all over you. Um, so it is worth using a decent thread, definitely. But, um, yeah, polyester isn't the... the the, the evil thread that it used to be. Um, so, and a lot of them are cotton covered anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I'd go with the right I've, colour. I've gone back to crimpling in my mind now. <laughs> Do you remember that? We had, my whole wardrobe was crimpling when I was little because it didn't need to iron it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but then like ironing. we rebelled when we were about 15 and just only wore cheesecloth. Oh, yeah. Oh, my mum ironed my favourite cheesecloth blouse. Well, it was all crinkly. <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fashion's changed. Remember Simon shirts? How many? Simon. No. Simon shirts, little pockets on the side. They were, the, they were a trend. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back to start right sandals in a minute. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. The little red ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Back to quilting. OK. So we, we've now trimmed our blocks down. Two or three inches square. That makes them the perfect size to fit alongside our print and background three inch squares. Okay. Now rather than do lots and lots of those for you, I have some ready done. So we didn't we didn't have we did have quilts, but we didn't have um Continental quilts, as we used to call them, duvets. No, no. You'd have your sheet and your blanket and then an eider down on the top and you just had added more layers the colder. Yeah. Do you remember when, when continental quilts came in? Oh, well, Deborah, I'm not having a continental quilt. We'll be having muesli next. <laughs> <laughs> it was my mother. <laughs> oh, my mum was really keen. Was she? Yeah, really keen. My dad wasn't so sure, but it, yeah, mum was really keen. <laughs> yeah. So here we go, we've now got, for, for a block, we've got a centre square, we've got four of these rectangles, we have four of the plain, we should have four, we now have four <laughs> of, the, of the corner pieces, and we have eight of these with the solid and the background. And eight of these, oh, there's the other one. Eight of these with a print and, and the, um, the background. So that is the materials for a block. Okay. And as I've said before, you could, if you wanted to, use the same centre square as the outside if you wanted to. So at this point, you can... Kind of you can just mix and, and match. Yeah. yeah, completely mix and match. So if I change my mind about that one. Could, could you show could. us where, whereabouts on the actual finish quilt yep. those are going to go? So, centre square. Fairly straightforward there in the centre. Yeah. The oblongs go at the sides and the top and bottom of that square. And I'll show you how to assemble it because um, it's assembled in rows. Okay. I found it best to assemble it in rows. The um, solid background squares go here. And at the bottom. Okay. And these then are your solid and patterned Lovely. prints. So the, the, the instructions are very, very clear, but I found um, to be speedy, I sewed everything into a, a chain piecing method, which is basically you're sewing the same thing over and over and over again. So I would sew all of these pieces first, or well, it doesn't matter what you start with, but sew all of those first and then sew all of these together next and so on. 
So we'll start by sewing these Did you together. do that block by block or would you do the whole quilt? Normally, um, my method is to make one block, make sure I know how it works, make sure it fits and I've got the placement right. Once I'm happy with one, then I'll just chain piece everything else and cut everything else in bulk as well. Because mm. you've got your bit of confidence then. And if you're really... Um, because I mean, this is achievable by a beginner. It's um, the half square triangles are the most difficult bit, and you've just seen hopefully how easy that is. Um, I've lost my track now, but um, I think it's the the size of the finished quilt that can be a little bit intimidating, maybe for a beginner. But when you yeah, consider but these are just block it's by just block, the same block yeah, over and over that's again. Right. Oh, and that's what I was going to say. If you are a complete beginner and you're not sure, and you've bought this lovely fabric and you think, I'm afraid I'm going to, I don't want to cut into it, I might make a mess. If you've got scrub fabrics, even just old sheets or, or something like that, make up a test block, a bit like a 12 for dressmaking, yes. I suppose. Make up a test block. Once you're happy with that, then you'll feel much more confident about cutting into your nice fabrics. Because it is the daunting yes. bit, isn't it? Uh, and the fabrics that um, Sal is using, um, there's a lot of you with these in baskets. Would you mind? Would you mind checking out? Because when we when we get to a stage where um, we don't have very many left, you may find that your baskets are being emptied. Um, so just have a quick look at what we've actually got. All of the fabrics that you need, you're going to need a wadding and you're going to need um, backing fabric as well. And binding, yeah. Oh, and binding, yes, of course. Um, but these are all fat quarters. So all moda, all coordinated, lovely quality. Um, I, I love bundles like this as well because you just know that it's going to match. I have a world of heather in just a minute as well. Um, and then you've got your... No, I'm not on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the Sewing Street Facebook page, honest. <laughs> I'm not doing my online banking or anything like that. Oh, we had a cow pat episode last week. Oh, <laughs> Strange days. Um, so these are all your fat quarters. And with this one, you have that deep burgundy. And then you've got your uh, your background fabric as well. So all of that £65.99. And that's including your, your pattern as well. There you go. Never a normal day. We'll have a quick word with Heather. Um, oh, she's gone. No, she's not, she's not on tip. Look, I've lost her now. She's not on Tinder or any other dating site. <laughs> Heather's not my match. <laughs> Look, I can't find you now, Heather. Where have you gone? I thought... Right, where are you? You're down here somewhere. I saw you. There, here we are. Uh, morning, Debbie, Sally and everyone. Lovely start to my Thursday seeing you both. Today I'll be continuing to make June Taylor's Alexandra bag, which I see is in the show today. It is later on. First time without uh, being in a bundle too. Um, I'd recommend using Design Roll or Bolly Pops for the strips to make life easier. I'm really pleased with it so far. Have a lovely day. Thank you, Heather. Post pictures, won't you, when you've, when you've finished it. Yeah. So now I've swapped to a quarter inch foot on the machine and I'm going to sew these pieces together uh, as I uh, like so. So this is a bit more important with accuracy isn't it so you, so you point me. It, it, right? it, it is um, and the scant quarter inch works really really well for, for this and you'll see as we come to assemble. Gosh this is fast I'm going to slow it down a time. <laughs> But again, if you don't have um, a quarter inch foot, you can you can actually measure that. Like as Sally said, you, you can you do a can. test piece first. Uh, a lot of feet actually have a quarter inch mark on them, even though you might not realise it. There's a little. I don't know whether you'll be able to see this on on the overhead at all. Let me put it on here. So you've got this what looks like a standard foot, but there's a little mark, tiny little mark there and there which are quarter inch marks. All right. Um, now, it, it, you have to test with each foot, you, you know, on, on your machine and, and um, different feet for the same machine, but there will normally be somewhere a quarter inch mark. But as I've said again, test it by moving your needle across and, and making sure. And if you, if you can't see that or you're not sure, you can um, put a bit of masking tape or, I use those little sticky removable notes to, yeah. to put on the side, just to so you've got your, your quarter inch marked. But it's well worth making sure you've got that 
Right. I like um, a, a really thick elastic band, so they've got something to bump your fabric up against Oh, that's as a good well. idea. Yeah. Be a big one, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a hair bubble. Big elastic band. <laughs> okay, so I've... I'm saying that. Oh, no. I'm doing something like this. It's the first time I'm on this machine, so I shall claim a certain amount of ignorance. There you go. Can you see that? Yeah. No, when I'm if I'm arranging things like this, I I don't chain piece. I will literally lay them all out so I know that I'm sewing the oh, next yeah. one in the right order. I would I would just chain piece. Would you? But that's why I would do the first block to test it and make sure. Um, and I will do this because I'd like I'd like if we can if time allows to um, to make a block. Shall I, shall I stop chatting so much? <laughs> Right. Um, we've got less than, tw I'm not going to stop chatting at all, um, less than 20 of each one of the bundles now remaining, so if you're, if you're tempted, make sure you get hold of yours before we, before we start selling out. Can we have a chat about wadding while, you, while you're selling? Yes, of course, yes. Um, what would you recommend? Um, if you're making a quilt like this, which is probably for, probably more likely for an adult to go on a bed, guest bed, uh, or as a gift, I, I always recommend going for the best wadding you can. There are all sorts on the market, but um, one with a cotton blend or a wool blend is often quite good. They have different drapes. So if you um, want a, a, a quilt that is longer than your bed and to drape over, you probably want something like a, a wool. Uh, but a... Cotton will, will work as well. If I'm making quilts for small children or for charity quilts and so on, I tend to use a polyester. Okay. Simply because it's probably going to be washed more often. than uh, Now, the, the cotton and the wool ones can be washed. There's no problem with it. But you probably wouldn't want them to keep being washed and tumble dried and washed and tumble dried over and over. Fabrics will stand up to it absolutely fine, as will the wadding. But you'll just find it will have a better... It will come up better. Okay. Um... We've so, got, so yeah, we've again, got both options for you. Um, got the details on your screen. These are queen size um, for the polyester, um, and with the cotton one, this is needle punched. So yeah. does that mean it's going to hold its shape better? Yeah, needle, needle punching is because um, it, whatever it's made of, it's going to be made from some fibres, whether they're man-made or um, natural, like cotton or wool. So they are fibres, and a bit like felting when you are felting something, you need it to stay together. Yeah, it's um, it's not like a thread that's twisted or fabric that's woven. It's just all loose. So needle punching is literally loads and loads and loads and loads of needles on on a machine that punches, punches, punches through and mats it together. Bit like sort felt, of holds yeah. it together, a bit like felting. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can sort of see that effect. That I think on this one's just you can just see slight bits, very very slight little lines where presumably the needles have have gone in in a straight line. Um, and as it says on the, oh, you probably can't see it. It says needle punch for extra stability and to avoid bearding. When you're putting your quilt together and quilting it, you don't want those fibres to all come apart. So the yeah. needle punching will help to keep it nice and uh, and together. Okay. And bearding is when the wadding comes through the fabric or comes uh. through the stitching. So. Normally, with a quilt that's got a light coloured background like this, you would use a light coloured um, wadding for it as well. Okay. Bearding happens more often if you're using a very thick fab, a uh, very thick needle, or quite a thick th thread, Amazing. or if the fabrics you're using aren't very tightly woven. These are tightly woven, really good quality fabrics. But some of the cheaper ones, they aren't. You can see the weave of the fabric much more easily. And that is more likely for the wadding to poke through. So if you use a needle punched, that will help you to stop the bearding. Okay. And a lot of people will find, um, perhaps from the, from the past, when you bought the really cheap polyester wadding that used to be available, used to get two ounce and four ounce, really thick, podgy sort of wadding, they would beard quite quite a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So where I was saying that if you use polyester thread with a cotton fabric, you'll find it won't fall apart these days. The polyester th 
wadding will, will fall apart and it, and it can sort of bu bubble up and bunch up. But the new stuff doesn't do that because it's needle punched. Yeah. I think oh, that's okay. needle punched as well. Yeah, it is. It is. Burgers. So it's good quality stuff, that. And although you don't see it, it will make your quilt. So use the best you can because you are going to be using it hopefully a lot and it will you will want to, to um, other people to see it too. Yeah, I want it to last a long time. Do. I've had a message from, was it Angie? Angela. Hi, Angela. Oh, she says, hi, everybody. Hello. Oh, she's enjoying laughs and giggles. What are you doing? <laughs> um, oh, she's been, she's been entertained while she's learning, she oh, says. Oh, good, good. <laughs> um, and she says, um, have a great day. From West Yorkshire, was that, sorry? West Dorset. Oh, OK. Have a nice day yourself, too. Talking about Tinder, I put my foot in it with my husband yesterday. What, he, he, he caught you? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, what, what'd you do? Well, we've just been married 25 years, so, you know, we have, we've been together 30. Um, but, yeah, he, we're both rugby fans, and he's a very, very keen rugby fan. And um, <laughs> the team that we support, well, Gloucester, is, um, has changed a lot of its staff. And they've got a new, I think it's a defence coach. And he said, oh, this is, a, this is our new left, right wing, left wing, and we went, oh, big, ugly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but they can play. But this guy said, this is our new defence coach. And I went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I know, I know. So I was, no, that, that, you should have followed that off. by, he's wearing a nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. I've blown it. <laughs> Look at the French seams on that tunic. I know. So he wouldn't. He wouldn't let. The, he wouldn't let that rest last night. <laughs> so after the show, I'm going to buy my season ticket. <laughs> oh, you can buy yourself a season ticket. Oh yeah. <laughs> and binoculars. <laughs> well, although the thing is, the the, um, the coaches sit behind at the top, so I might want a, a cheap seat. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> That's when they let us go back, obviously. <laughs> I do miss oh, not going to. You can have your picture taken and be cut out and sit on a seat these yes. days, guys. <laughs> yes. And then pay for the privilege. <laughs> yeah. Better not. Um, yeah, that won't go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Two metre distance. Was, he's rotten. Yeah. <laughs> Boris says. He's quite nice, though. <laughs> Probably old enough to be his grandmother, but <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I... So we thought you went because you appreciated the game. <laughs> Mind the same thing, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, you'll we'll have to come in on a Sunday morning. Sometime. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I think I've done most of this. I might just have one more left to do. So, I will just lay them out if we can, to make sure I'm assembling this correctly. We have our centrepiece. We have the oblongs. We have these. You did those really quickly, considering. Yeah. <laughs> I can so and be embarrassed at the same time. <laughs> got looks like two more to do yeah two more to do so I'll just put those how are we doing on time are we all right no we've got what 10 minutes 15 minutes oh we might get this block finished then <laughs> long as you like really <laughs> don't tend to stick to times here do you <laughs> <laughs> not till it gets to 12 o'clock anyway <laughs> okay. So we've got that one, 
then we have that one. And that doesn't look right somehow. It isn't, is it? So I've got those. Oh yeah, I'm missing one somewhere. That. Uh, uh, uh. I think I might have put that one on. Oh no, that's that's it. That should go on that side. That's it. That one goes on that side. Okay. And then this one is the last one to do. Solid. That's the only thing you just got to check, but the instructions are very clear and it's got it's got the instructions for doing the half square triangles, but then it's got your layout here. Twizzle it around again. That's it. Back <laughs> to front, upside down. And it shows you how to put it together in rows, which is what we're going to do next. Okay. Finish sewing this one. Make sure I've got it in the right place because I was talking there. Yep. This is your favourite bundle as well. Out of out of the two of them, the mode of fabric. I always when whenever I'm making these quilts or other projects, I always think, oh that's that's a lovely, lovely bundle. Love that. <laughs> and apart from just checking I've got all the fabrics for the demo, I don't always go through them in that much uh, detail, depending how much time I've got. And when I got those out, I thought, oh I do love those. <laughs> There we go, so that's the jigsaw um, laid out. So I'm going to sew these together now into rows. Do you have more than one project on the go at a time or do you like to complete one before you move on to the next one? Um, I have lots of things on the go. Do you? <laughs> um, if I'm working, making a quilt for, for Sewing Street, then... Um... Oh, hello. Oh, it's had an idea. It's, 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 come, it's come out. Um, oh, is that, that must have been warning you that you're running low on bobbin thread. Oh no, the needles, that's clever isn't it? Needles come unthreaded, not to worry. Um, yeah, I normally have lots of things on the go. If I'm doing a quilt like this for the show, then I just work solidly. So that was like four days, nothing else. Wow. Luckily Paul cooks. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, bring me up. But at home, I like to do lots of different things. I might do a bit of hand sewing in front of the TV. I might do a bit of knitting. Might do a bit of felting. Um, occasionally do card you making. Were a yeah, we may be poaching you. <laughs> Don't knit very fast. I like to knit little little animals and things. And oh, little do you? Things. Yeah. I used to knit, oh, I haven't knitted for, for years to be honest, I'm not the quickest knitter, um, but when my, my eldest lad was little he had so many jumpers that I'd knitted, but they're all stripy because I'd get bored just knitting in one colour. Yeah, I love those variegated yarns, Yes. and the one thing I do find very relaxing, and this probably sounds weird, is to knit socks, Oh. and I knit on four or five needles. That's quite a skill isn't it? It. Yeah, well a lot of people think it is, I, th I find it quite straightforward but then a bit back to front perhaps um yeah i love it it's so relaxing and you don't have to turn it because you just keep going round and round and round in circles oh, right. um, and i've got lots of pairs of socks in variegated yarns that i just look at really <laughs> you're not wearing them now i'm not wearing them now right no. we expect to see you in variegated socks next time you come in <laughs> oh they are i am a bed sock woman i have to admit in the winter <laughs> I've got terrible cold feet. <laughs> Sally's a bed sock woman. <laughs> More secret. <laughs> I've never worn a bed sock, I have to say. Oh, you're not? No. Oh, my feet are cold all year round. <laughs> <laughs> That's our next row. Oh, have we got any more comments? <laughs> I love working here. <laughs> well, I'm not pressing all of these as I go. I would normally press them as I go, but I'm for, for speed. For Morning, this. Alan. Um, uh, Alan's just finished his first ever butterfly patchwork, and it's my 15 years anniversary of when he started sewing today. Happy 15 Happy years, 15 Alan. Years, yeah. Many well more to done. come. Lovely quilt as well. Mind you, I bet it took you 15 years to finish that V-neck sweater, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but 
but it's still not finished, is it, Alan? <laughs> when I've knitted anything, I'm a bit slow to sew it back up. I don't like that bit. <laughs> there was a trend, and I never actually had one, but it, it was a trend in the 60s to have knitted swimwear. Oh! <laughs> there, there are a lot of baggy trunked kids on the beach when we went on holiday. I can't imagine when they get wet. <laughs> oh, do you want the funniest thing? A set of instructions on some uh, water soluble thread um, that I was reading once for saying I do not use on swimwear. And I just, <laughs> I just have visions. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, how embarrassing. Although I've seen some of these um, fashion catwalk things with men wearing crocheted mankinis. Oh, really? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know what to. I don't think I'd want to see that. A rugby defence coach. <laughs> 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 oh, you, you just know. You just know. I'm going to Photoshop that. <laughs> Okay, so I'm continuing to sew my rows because I want to show how at the end we press so that they all interlock nicely to create a finished block. I'm sewing everything into That'll rows. be a challenge for Alan, actually, Alan. Mankini when you've finished your, your quilt. No pictures. No pictures. No. <laughs> Headshot only. <laughs> okay. As I say, I would normally, every seam I sew, I would press, um, set the seam to set the stitches into the fabric, then press. But for this, I'm just going to sew all into rows and then do the pressing all at once. Okay. And I'm not pinning, I don't tend to be a pinner, but again, if you prefer and you feel more confident, then please do pin. I think with smaller pieces like this particularly, by the time you've pinned, you, you could have sewn half a dozen together. Yeah, so when they're small, very small pieces, pins can actually distort more than, than help. But it's up, entirely up to you. Okay. Now you've That's got right. all of these piles and piles of squares of fabrics cut out and labelled. Will you actually make the whole quilt? If I can, yes. <laughs> oh. You're just going to have piles just, and piles of squares of fabric just in your sewing room, aren't you? Just need another three days. And I'll be <laughs> yeah. fine. Okay, so, can you see on the overhead now we've got our rows sewn together? So what I'd like to do now is press all of those to show you how pressing correctly makes all the difference. Okay. So we've got our pressing mat. We have our handy iron. Okay. So if we start with the center strip, can you see that okay? I'll set the seams and that just beds the thread into the fabric again to give you a nice crisp finish. And that helps with accuracy as well. For this centre strip, <clears throat> I'm going to press these seams open, just these two side seams open. And I'm going to press everything else into the centre. It's toward the dark side of the centre square, but don't worry about this not being the dark side here. Okay. Okay. So all of those seams get pressed into the centre and you can use, you know, best press or whatever you have as well if you like, which I do tend to use a lot of. Okay, so that's that one. Then the next row to that, let me just double check on my, that's it, that will go next. So on this one I'm going to press all the seams outwards. Okay. There we go. 
And then you steam. I do at home, but... Um, there's no water in the iron. There's no water in the iron. And, uh, <laughs> it might cut <laughs> So then for the, the, the top mm. row, we need to press the seams the way, wasn't it? That back, one. back out again. That one. So that one is... Yeah. There you go. Those seams are all pressed towards the centre. These are all pressed out, so these need to come back towards the centre again. Okay. And just take your time with this, because it will make all the difference. So this is going to help with your points, isn't it's it? It's going to help with your points. And just your general accuracy of your blocks. I didn't have to trim any of the blocks when I'd, I'd made this one. It came together really, really well. Okay. Yeah, it's a well-designed pattern. Is this pressing in the instructions as well, or is this your I don't your think tips? it is specifically, <laughs> but it's just my my um, my tip. I, I've, I've covered the instructions up now. I'll look in a minute. So I don't know whether she says about it, but that's how I found it much more accurate and it's a technique I use with all quilt piecing so when we come to join these together which I'll do now these seams are pressed into the center these are pressed away so now if we can look on the overhead here when you put your next row together you've got one seam going this way one seam going that way so they will actually lock together and that's what's called nesting, nesting your seams. And that's a really good way of getting accurate points. And you can, if you want to, pin through that seam. I would normally put the pin through so that it comes through the stitch line on the back and through the stitch line on the front. And then you know that you've got them perfectly matched. But when they're nesting like this, I often don't even bother to pin. I didn't I don't think I pinned anything really on that one yeah it um, makes the seams a bit less bulky as well when you do that it does it? make the seams less bulky and that's better then for when you come to quilt it you're not going through too many layers at once yeah so I'm doing this quite quickly as I say you could you can pin but the seams are nesting when it comes to binding, you don't need bias binding, do you? No. Um, you only really need bias binding if you're doing something that's got curves or is circular. No. Normally, I only ever use straight binding on quilts, and I use a double fold binding, which is you fold the fabric in half before you apply it to the edge. It just makes it slightly more hard wearing. If it's just for decorative use, like a wall hanging, then you can get away with a single fold binding, but I still always go for a double. Okay, so if we now press that, set the seam. We've had a message from Lou. Hi, Lou. Hello. Um, she said, um, love watching Sally. She's so clever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so if we look from above, can you see all your points are really nice and sharp and your joins are nice and crisp? Perfect. <laughs> and that's because we had one or two seams going one way, the other going in the opposite direction. Okay. So we do the same thing with the top. I'm hoping we can get this block finished. I don't think we're going to have time to finish the oh, whole no. block. But we'll We've only got two we'll more rows to idea. sew, but anyway. We'll go as far as we can. Do you want to have a look at the bundle as well um, while Sally's sewing? Yeah. So this is the one that she's using, which is all the motor fabrics. That's that's been your favourites. Um, for your sixty-five pounds and ninety-nine pence. So these are fat quarters. You're going to get eight of those, and you have the um, the dark fabric as well. So in this one, it's in the burgundy. And you've got all of your backing fabric too. So you are going to need um, backing fabric, not background fabric, backing fabric, and your um, and your binding, and of course your wadding as well. 
So those relief at quarter slot. So I'll take you through really quickly. Just to interrupt, the pattern does tell you how much backing and um, oh, does it? A binding and wadding you need. Yeah, it's got lovely. Nice. Thank you. So instructions are included in this one as well. And if you, your backing you're going to need for the largest one, four and three quarter yards. Um, but you've got all your instructions on there anyway. So that's 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 really handy actually. Um, three quarters of a yard of binding. Oh, a fabric to make your binding. That doesn't seem very much binding. Um, three quarters of a yard of fabric to make the binding. To make the work. binding, yes. 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 <laughs> Um, right, so a third of the stock of this one sold out, so not many, very many of those left. Um, so that's your mode bundle. It's, it's, it can be almost quite Christmassy, this. I know it's butterflies and flowers, but it's the, the quite wintry kind of colours, aren't they? Warm and snuggly colours. So that's that one. And instructions included. And then the quilt that Sally made, which is at the back of the set. Is this one? So I, just, I love these colours. I just think they're so pretty and almost unexpected with the grey in there as well. But it works so well together, doesn't it? Um, so these are Daisy May Country Life uh, for sixty-seven pounds ninety-nine, and we've got chickens and flowers and strawberries and rabbits and are they hares and um, butterflies, but in really lovely soft colours. And this is a new range to us as well. Um, there's your grey, and you've got the cream um, for your background fabric as well. And of course, your instructions are included for £67.99. You've noticed we've got threads as well. We've got threads, we've got new bundles of threads. We'll have a look at those later. I'm have a look in a bit. One quick thing I'll mention is with both bundles, there is one or two fabrics, there are one or two fabrics, that um, are directional. Okay. I'll just finish this. Right, that block is finished. Um, so this fabric is directional and these floral ones are directional, right. which just means that they are in a certain direction, not an all over print like that. So if you are putting them for your centre, you may want to just make sure they face in the direction you want That's them to go. Yeah. It won't matter for the triangles, they will get tipped about a little bit, but for the, um, the centres and the squares, which I've done on here, they all face the right way around. But there we go. Well, don't I think round of applause. <laughs> Well, there's only me, but you know. <laughs> well, it's nice to make a block in a show because yes. then you know that it can be done. Obviously, I did the cutting out before, but all the sewing that I've done now is is been um, live on the show. So, and I haven't Thank you very pressed much. that as well as I could. But so you're going to be back again at uh, ten o'clock. What we're yes. going to be doing then? Some rulers. We've got ru rulers for cutting circles and ovals and part circles and part ovals. Um, which is great for applique, hand applique, all sorts. I'll be showing that later. You're going to give us some tips for sewing circles as well, then, sewing line curls. I can do, yes. Yes, I think that would be good. Okay. Um, so, Charlie's going to be back again at 10 o'clock. I'll see you again after the break um, in the next hour. Uh, we've got PU coming up, but we've got new stuff. We're going to make a wallet. Um, so I'll see you again in a couple of minutes' time. Let's meanwhile take a look at how, he, how, how you can order. Have a look at this. Hey. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page.
back to see me back. <laughs> My baby piece of kit with the sewing is the same with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in the school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hi, I'm Rosie Weld. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello, my name's Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then, bye.
Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello there, welcome back again. Um, I'm Debbie and you're watching Sewing Street. Uh, we've got quite a lot to show you in this hour and it uh, seems to be all about the bags, but we've got some brand new fabrics for you, or fabric. We've got some brand new PUs for you too. Um, I'm asked about this quite a lot. If you're making um, uh, wash bags or you want to put clear perspex, tight perspex, clear pockets in bags maybe. Um, I'll tell you what these are really useful for as well. If you're making um, over back of chair storage, I'm thinking in um, on the back of your car seat. If you want somewhere to put a tablet, if the kids are watching videos or something like that on there, then it's quite easy to pop them behind there and you can see through them. But we've got some glittery ones as well. So we've got a few choices of those. We've got the PU, we've got some moddings, we've got some um, um, quilted go bag making and, um, and we've got some straps as well. So it's all about the bags in this hour. And I'm going to be making a transparent folder. I've never made one before, um, so that's that's going to be fun, and that's using the, the clear PU. But let's have a look at these PUs that we have for you. So this is glittery look, half a meter. It's a little bit wet because I've been steaming it this morning. I just thought I'd, I'd give it a try to see if I can get the creases out, because obviously you can't iron it. Um, but you could hang it over a steamy bath maybe, or... Over there. Just don't touch it directly with heat because it's plastic, it will melt. And the glitter bits are actually encapsulated inside the, uh, the PU, so they're not going to shed. Quite glitzy, isn't it? And it's only £2.99. I, I think you could probably make about four folders out of that, four A4 folders. So uh, if you want to make your own instead of buying, let me just give this a go actually while we're there and see if I can get some of these creases out because it will be creased up when you get it home. Oh, now, oh, look, it's gone all soft. So again, not too close. Oh, oh, that's satisfying. And then I need a cloth. Oh, I had a cloth. And then smooth it out. Because of course it's going to be wet. Oh, that, that really worked. So this is the um, the rainbow glitter. I don't know what to use now. So you can really see the the glittery effect, but you've got lots of colours underneath there. I'm just going to do that. So it doesn't shed. It's not going to get all over the place. You're not going to be looking at, at glitter on the cat, the dog, and your carpet for the rest of the year. Um, but you can really see, can you see all of the different colours in there? It's really rainbow 
colours. There's red and green and, and they're all kind of... Um, like when you look at a, a jewel and it gets all sparkly and you see all the different colours reflecting. It's that kind of look, that kind of colour there. <laughs> now you can sew with this. I've got some hint tips for you. You don't need a special needle. I'd use... Um, don't use a, a thick needle because you'll have holes in it. I'd use a polyester thread just because it's got a little bit of stretch and you'll need a walking foot or a non-slip foot on your sewing machine and use a long stitch because the smaller the stitches the closer they are obviously and it's, it'll tear easier. Um, so just make sure you've got that, that long stitch and if you are a little bit concerned you know if you really want this to take the strain of something and you're worried about the seam line being um, too weak then there's no reason why you can't put a tiny little drizzle of glue straight across your seam when you've finished and that won't just um, strengthen the seam I'd suggest HD2 um, the Gutterman glue it'll also make it waterproof as well because obviously this is waterproof it's water resistant it's waterproof it's shower proof but your stitch line won't be because you've made holes in it so if it is some Thing that you want to make waterproof then a little bit of glue over the top of your seam would work there and there is a lot you know when, when you consider it's that it's that wide you can make frosted windows with it couldn't you more affordable than buying the glass and you can still see through it um, so that's that one then we have completely clear That one. So it might look a little bit opaque, but it's because I've got two layers there together. So completely clear again at two ninety nine, and then finally we've got the silvery one. Let me put that white behind there again so you can see it in all its glory. So it does reflect lots of colours, but it's not as colourful as the. Um, as the rainbow one. So that's the difference between the two. That's your rainbow one. It is clear, it's just got loads more colour in it. So this one's a little bit softer, it's a little bit more subtle. You can probably see that better there, can't you? There we go. So shimmery, not too sparkly, a little bit classy. Have you used it before? What did you make? What have you got in mind when you see something like this? I mean, you can use it as just a, a, a regular fabric if you wanted to put a lining inside um, a lunchbox um, or something that you need to wipe clean like that. If it's somewhere that you're going to store things like um, uh, paintbrushes or pens or you know, things that you have to wipe clean. Uh, so you could, you, could, you could actually make a pencil case out of it. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? You could see everything that's inside there then. So again, it's £2.99 and it's quite, it's quite thick. It's quite tough. So you can make, oh, and anything that you need with a window in it as well. So maybe you're making um, your fat quarter boxes or card holders and things where you want a window so you can actually see all of the, that's a good idea. I say so myself, wasn't my idea. Um, so those are the three different options. Those are brand new and I am going to be sewing with those. I, w I wouldn't, hmm. Oh, the clear's in the lead at the moment. I'm thinking I wouldn't make anything that I've got to turn inside out if I'm just making a fold. I think I'll just stitch down the outside. I'm working out in my mind how we're going to do this. Clear's the most popular at the moment. But I'm going to use the rainbow over there. Um, let's have a look at um, H640. This, you know, we, we, we sell out of this an awful lot and it's something that I use an awful lot as well. Um, not just for bag making. Um, this is... A fusible fleece, so therefore it's a polyester fleece. It's about a quarter of an inch in thickness and the fusible bit is the knobbly bit on one side. So this is ironed onto the wrong side of your fabric and it gives you stability as in it almost stands up on its own. So you're not going, to, if you're making a bag for instance, it's not going to be all floppy, but it's not too stiff. I'm, I'm going to make a box because I didn't get round to finishing that the other day. So I'm going to make a box in the last hour at 11 o'clock and I'm going to use H640. So it'll still be soft, it's easy to sew through, but it will stand up. Now this is £9.99 for a square metre, which is great value for money. And I don't just use this for, um, 
for bags, I'll use it sometimes on the back of a cushion cover, particularly if I'm quilting into it to give the stitches some, some definition. I'd use it if I'm making wall hangings or um, table runners, placemats. Yes, there's the heat resistant, but um, if you're not too concerned about that, then this would, uh, would be absolutely fine. Um, if you're, so bag making, cushion making, I'm just thinking, I, I use H640, it's probably one of the most used products, or the, the one thing that I buy over and over again because I use so much of it. Um, even handles on bags, it makes them not too stiff and not too heavy, um, but I'd just use an inch strip if I was going to do that. Yeah, most projects, book covers, anything where you just want the fabric to have that little bit more substance, then that's, that's what I'm going to use. So we talk about H640 a lot, so I just thought I'd go into a bit more detail there. Um, doesn't come to you with instructions. Um, this one will take steam. A lot of the fusible fleeces will go wrinkly and it's not recommended that you steam them, but this one will do. So hot iron, as hot as your fabric will take. And then don't iron onto this because it is uh, polyester, so it can go very crinkly if you touch it with the iron. So iron from the top of your fabric and a good old blast of steam. Start from the centre and work your way out to the edge without pushing so you're not going to create crinkles in your fabric. And that's the way you're going to do it. So that's that. It's only 9 99 which I think is fabulous value. Um, shall we have a look at... Plastic snaps. Um, we don't have this box full of snaps, but I do want to use them on my um, on my folder. Um, but there are some available on jewellery makers. So if you go onto our website on sewingstreet.com, and you know by now probably that we are part of jewellery makers website. But if you go up to the top there in the search bar and type in snaps, it will take you to the jewellery maker website and those two top ones are the same as the ones that are in this big box. You will need some pliers to apply them. So just, just to let you know. But we don't have any of these available at the moment, but um, hopefully they'll be back in stock before long. Um, I'm going to use the rainbow one. So let us, I'm going to give it another blast of steam. I'd suggest when you get it home, you don't start straight away because we do need to get rid of these creases. Oh, well, that's so satisfying. It's gone all floppy look. And the creases are just dropping out. But remember, it will melt, so don't touch it with the iron. And because the steam's not going through, it will be wet. Just to be aware. But yes, take it in the shower with you. <laughs> I'll just give that a wipe. If I wiped it from the wet side, it would be better, wouldn't it? Oh, there, they've come out really quickly. This is going to be ever so easy as well. Right. So I will need my rotary cutter that can slip off and roller and mat. Didn't I didn't bring my ruler. I would suggest a rotary cutter, ruler and mat um, <laughs> so that you get really, really straight lines because with, um, uh, with scissors, you, I mean, with plastics, you can kind of slip a little bit on them. So I think your rotary cutter, ruler and mat is going to give you a more accurate cut. Kat is directing today and she's very, that's fine, thank you. She's very kindly just whizzed out. It's a very, she's got very long arms and, um, and passed me the ruler that I forgot to bring. So I'm just going to trim this down and make it square. Yeah, you can, if you've got scissors, you can get a little bit wobbly because there's nothing to actually grip onto when you're sewing with fabrics like this. Um, don't worry too much about your blades either. It doesn't seem to blunt blades very easily when you're sewing with this type of fabric. So I'm just trimming this down again to make it square. The bottom looks square. I'll take that label off there. And I'm sticking that on the side of the sewing machine <laughs> for cat's information. 
and then we'll trim this off as well. So, plastic folded, when you can buy, they are available. But nice to make your own because you can make them in any size that you like. Um, I've, I have quite a few A4 and A3 folders actually that I'll use to keep um, sketches and paintings and things like that and to keep, keep me organised. Um, I've never seen an A5 size. An A6 size. Told you this is slippy. Um, or huge ones. Alright, so I'll snip you off there. And you off there. And then let's just... I'll cut this down to size a little bit because it wants to pour off the table. I'm going to lose it. Um, let's do it. What's, I'll say five, ten inches. Oh, we'll do a smaller one. Bespoke to any size that you like. So let's do that. And... Aha! So we have... Oh, this is going to be so quick. This is all we need. Let's move that out of the way. So that goes there. That folds over, and that's a diddy little folder. So I'm going to put my magnetic snap on here. Magnetic snap. I'm going to put my popper on here. I think I'll cut the corners round first of all. Oh, I could have done with a round template, couldn't I? So if we'd, if we'd have planned this, then I would have had a round template, which is coming up in the next hour. But, see, Sally's got it. Excuse my, excuse my back a moment while I find something round. That will do. And a pen. Is that a pen? Let's see if that works. And I'm just going to mark. No, I need a, I need a pen pen, I think. <laughs> so this a chalk should do. Um, this is why you need a circle cutter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> do you want to see my pen? <laughs> see, see, we, we we don't sell those. These are our gifts that I had made for some of the people here. Um, it was uh, last year I was at a show, and a lady came over who was um, school teacher, and she was teaching um, like, like junior school ages how to sew. And uh, when they came up with questions about anything, she'd say, "Well." what would Debbie do? And then they'd go to my YouTube channel and look something up and learn what to do. And I just thought that was rather sweet. So I've, um, I've had pens made <laughs> with what does Debbie do? Um, I, I helped Hannah producer choose a new mortgage um, thing the other day. The pen was there when she needed to write something down. She thought, oh no, what would Debbie do? Debbie would go for that interest rate. That's what Debbie would do. Yeah, she says, was it two years or five years fixed term? What would Debbie do? Mm. So just cutting around the curve. Yeah, like so. Okay. And then I think I'll put the popper on now before I sew it together. So I'm using my cutting mat to mark the centre where I want that to go. It's great fabric to work with because there's no um, finishing seams or anything like that. It doesn't fray, does it? And then if I just fold that over to where I want it to go on that side, which is here. So, nice little storage pouch for things like your English paper piecing bits and bobs, um, embroidery threads, anything that you've got on the go, so to speak. Right, so we need two pointy bits and then we'll need an innie and an outie to go on the back of these so that's my innie that's my outie okay normally you'd make a hole using the little spike on these but I don't think it's going to go through so I'm going to use a pin so we'll go right over that hole there and then that goes in the hole. And 
and then that one there. And then we'll use the pliers to give it a squish. And then same with the second half. So we'll do pin through. Where have you gone? There you are. Pin through here. And oh, from that way now, aren't we? Make sure we get those on the right way around. So spike through the hole from the back. And then on here. Right. And then we'll give that one a squish. So I need to actually just roll that fabric up so I can get it in between the tweezers and the pliers. So you could have your own bespoke back to school set. All matching. Oh, I need to get that right in there. Oh, come on. Oh, it's dropped out. Oh, I've lost the hole. Right, you stay there now. I just need to get all of this and inside the pliers. That should do it. And then we'll put that on there. Is that not quite? Oh, there we go. And give it a squish. There. Now I'm going to give that a blast of steam again because I've wrinkled it all up. That'll do. Make sure it's dry before it goes under the sewing machine. And then I'll just remark where that's going to go. So I can't actually pin that. So I'll have some clips. So I don't want to leave holes in it with the pins. <laughs> in our new studio, everything, everything will be at this level, not at this level. September, apparently, we're going to be moving. Should I say that? Apparently, it's going to happen. I don't know what... Um, what we're waiting for at the moment, because we've got everything in place. We've got the stables and the, the race course and the, the casino, everything's already there. <laughs> right, pins go about there. Now I've got the walking foot on the machine and I am going to just lengthen the stitch a little bit. If you wanted to go for wonder clips, by the way, we've got a couple of options. We've got a large one or we've got a 10 pack. Personally, I would go for the large one. So I'm just looking, oh, there we go. Let's increase the stitch length. Oh, no, no, I didn't want to do that, go away. Straight stitch, 2.4, length 4%, that'll do. And then I'm just going to sew. So I'm not changing the needle, but I have got the walking foot. This has got an, um, an integral walking foot, so it may look a little bit odd if you haven't seen one before. Um, but it is a walking foot. If you don't have a, a walking foot, then a non-stick foot, a Teflon foot, a roller foot, there are other options. Now, I'm not going to trim the thread with a cutter because I want to tie the ends of these. I'm not going to reverse backwards either because if I start reversing, then I'm going to put more holes in the plastic and then it's, there's more likelihood that it's going to tear. So I'm just going to tie a knot at the bottom of this. Could use a contrast thread, that would be nice. That, I'm going to put a, a little spot of glue on the end of that to hold it, because I can't tie that. So let's lift that up. And again, so. Off the end, lift you up. And tie that in a knot again. <clears throat> you could make loads of these, couldn't you, with that? It's quite a huge sheet that you're going to get. Um, so you could be keeping your, your makeup brushes in here or your makeup. Um, your hairdressing requisites, your nail varnishes. Um, that's there. 
anything that's that's wet, sponges, anything like that would be ideal. Let's cut that off there. Um, oh, your swimming kit bag. If you've got wet things when you've been swimming, I've got that little bit bunched up there. It's because I had a long thread, isn't it? The only thing is I don't want to unpick anything because then when I re-sew, I'm going to have more holes in it. That's it. I've just got the thread caught. There we go. So let's fold that over. And we're done. That really quick, isn't it? And again, this could be any size you want to. You can make a little uh, wristlet um, to put on the side. You can actually fit zips into these as well. You could make a, a, a zipped pouch really easily. I'll tell you what would be nice, one of those decorative stitches with the, the lacy bits down the, down the side. And then you've got something that you can easily store things that you, you want to see inside there as well. So it's, it's a little bit fun. And are you buying at the moment? Well, for your £2.99, I don't think you could buy one. So you'd probably pay a fiver for that, wouldn't you? And you can make so many. Maybe you can sell them. Craft store. So that was the rainbow. Um, I've got loads of stuff here again. This one's the silver. <clears throat> And let's have a look how many you could make. So of this size, maybe even bigger, you could get one, two, three, four, at least five of those. So even if you, if you were paying £2.99 for one of those in the stationers, um, then that's going to cost you £15, all but a few pence. Um, but you can make five of those at least for your £5.99. Um, it's going to keep everything clean. It's all wiped clean as well. You can see inside. You can see what's in there. You can use it over and over again. Um, if you don't have the poppers, you can use a little bit of um, Velcro. I'd use the stick-on ones for this because that's going to have a really nice strong adhesion. Maybe put an extra little bit of glue behind there. You can put trimming on it. There's no reason why I couldn't have put a little bit of bias binding around there. That'd look nice, actually, wouldn't it? I'm back down in the cellar again, bear with me. Mm. And it's a great way, that's that shearing elastic all over the place, of, um, I'll use the rainbow again so I'm not, I'm not cutting into somebody's order. But there's lots to play with. So even if something goes, if you make something like that and it goes really horribly wrong, then you've still got lots more that you can play with as well. So you're not actually wasting very much. Um, we could make an apron, couldn't we? What about a child's apron? Child's apron. Let's do an apron. Right, so um, I'll use scissors for this one because my top isn't big enough, I don't think. Um, okay, so we'll do it about there. We'll do that. And then, oh no, I'll do this. So you could have matching aprons and reusable tablecloths for the kids' play area. Oh, I bought my grand granddaughter some of that kinetic sand. Weird stuff, isn't it? Have you ever seen it? It's, uh, yeah, sand pouring. It's great, actually. It's really easy to clean up as well. Right, missed a bit there. Where are you? Can't, I can't see where I'm cutting because it's transparent. I think that... Oh. <laughs> Let's do that. That might be a little bit too wide. See, of course at home you'd measure and everything, wouldn't you? I don't know why I'm holding it up against myself because there's no way it's going to fit. Right, I'm going to make that a little bit narrower. I know I'm wasting, but I wouldn't waste if I was at home because um, I'd measure it all properly. That's that, and then I'm going to chop across here. So we have that. That's apron shaped, is it, is it not? We could have a pocket on the front as well. And I'm going to put bias binding all around the edge. What colour thread have I got? Grey. 
You could be making bibs. Um, <clears throat> right, I've got enough of that. Yes, I think so. So I'm talking to myself again. Um, let's, I'll start there. And <clears throat> oh. Right, I'm just wrapping the bias binding around there. So this is only decorative. You don't actually need this on here. But I just thought it might be nice to see what it looks like. Okay, if you're making to sell, what would you pay for a little apron like this? It, well, it's cost you maybe um, a third or, well, about a pound for the plastic maybe. And then even if it's cost you a pound in buyer's binding, which I don't think it will do, I'm just going to pull that round the corner. I'm not going to mitre it. You could make boxes, couldn't you? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go round. So bathroom toys or, or your household cleaning things. Keep yourself organised under the sink. And I know it's plastic, but we're going to have more than one use out of these things. All right. Go on around that corner. I would normally mitre that. Or those um, pocket organisers. You can make one of those with transparent pockets on the front. So you can see what's in there. Need to put some straps on it as well. You have to make sure that your bias binding is even on both sides because if it's not, you can see through it. Here. And you know, I, I think price wise, is what you pay for things like this can be quite a lot. Kids tend to grow out of things, which I think is, you know, very selfish of them. Um, <laughs> But you can make them in any size that you like, and oh, I'm just getting that. And it's fun, isn't it? Get the kids involved. This could be maybe the first thing that they ever make. It'd be good fun. So that's how do we how we're going to do this? We're going to do it like that. That's what we're going to do. So I have mitered the corner there. Oh, in you go. Go 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 go. Yes. And down here. I'm going to do a little pocket as well with vice binding across the top. I think that would be nice. Have I got to stop? Got to do my job, I'm afraid. <laughs> Lovely making this, but got to, got to do some selling stuff. We're a shopping channel after all. Having a nice time here. I don't want. I don't want to sell stuff. That's my P forty five in the past. Right in here. One more stitch. Go on. That's it. And then I shall overlap the end bit. Every time with scissors, isn't it? There we go. I'm not going to get to put the straps on, am I? and decorate it and personalise it and then maybe get some acrylic paints and paint names on it and then make different sizes. I've got two granddaughters so they're going to have to have one each. I've got to stop now. i got to stop. You know it's never going to get finished now. Um, so there's the apron. I was going to put a pocket on the front. Maybe put bias binding all the way around a pocket. It'd be quite nice as well. And then I'd use the same bias binding, but sew it over so that it makes a strap and make a little neck strap and ties out of that as well. So I think maybe four aprons you could make of the small size. You can make one big one. Um, in fact, it'd be very big. But, um, but for two ninety nine, isn't that that great? But so you can have a matching pouch to go with your apron. Got to move on now. Two more projects for kids. 
is reasonably tidy, isn't it? This is my Half Yard Kids book. So everything in here has been designed by myself um, to use less than half a yard of fabric. Um, sometimes a lot less than half a yard of fabric. This isn't a book for children to sew with, it's projects for you to sew for your children. Of course kids can sew them as well if they wanted to, but um, it's more about things that you can make for them. But it's not kids clothing, it's, it's purposeful things like the pyjama eater. Um, there's toys, there's educational games in here as well. Um, that's a, a pencil case. And uh, let's go through really quickly. Um, there's backpacks and there's storage things as well. So lots of ideas as to um, for tools and stitches and things like that that you may want to use. Um, that's a craft easel, but it folds away. So you could put some clear pockets on the front of that, couldn't you? Oh, you could. You're, you're going to need the clear um, PU for the fish game. So that's a nice bit of story. There you go. Look. So it's a fish bowl with bias binding around the top. And then these crabs and fish have got magnets in their noses and that twig has got a piece of embroidery thread with a magnet on the end of it. Um, so the skill is to pick up the fish but leave the crabs behind. So that's just a little bit of fun. There's another one that uses clear PU as well. There you go, look, that's what it does. Um, there's another one that uses clear PU and that is the curtain. So more storage there with a little um, folder. Um, Halloween bunting, that's really easy. That is a backpack, which is quite in depth because you've got the zip section at the front that actually opens out like a flap. So you can store all of your pens and pencils in there. So that's a nice school backpack. Love the monkey skittles. That's just, again, a little bit of fun. They've got weights in the bottom of them. I actually used, you know those um, sample paint pots that you can buy, the, the little ones, they've got those in them, just to use as weights. All dried up the paint inside them, so it's not gonna come out. Uh, little witch's hat. That's like a rag doll, but it's incorporated it into a cushion. It's actually sewn into the cushion. So it's a cuddly cushion and there's a pirate option there as well. And cube tidy, where's this curtain gone? There you go. So it's got portholes in it. Um, I, I actually made that. I When I first started writing books, um, my first ever book was um, making cushion covers with Search Press. And I suggested for my Next one, I do making curtains, and they said that um, they're a craft publisher, and they didn't they didn't deem curtains as being very crafty. So no, so I came up with an idea for a book called Crafty Curtains, um, and this was yeah, there's a way around thing. This is said no, but this is one of the curtains that I designed for that. So this was going to be against a window, and it's got portholes in it so that you can see out. Um, but this time I've used it over. Um, uh, like some shelving, so you can still see what's on the shelving, but it makes it a little bit neater, it makes it more fun. Yeah, I made a, a kitchen uh, curtain all made out of aprons. Um, so I like, did I go to town? And then they still said no. Um, pajama eater, still never did a curtain book. And um, there's a shoe bag, and that's your pencil case, and the kite wall hanging. Oh, and that's the caravan caddy. So it's it's just, um, it's like a folder, but it's something that you can put a Perspex window in there um, that you can store your toys in. So that's that. That is um, £9.99 is your price there. And you've got 20 projects in there for you to make. Right, over half the stock of all of those PVCs has now sold out. What are you going to make with it? Can't wait to see what see you makes. Um, oops, Angela's messaged in. Hi, Angela. And, oh, oh, go on. She says, I think Debbie is totes amazing. <laughs> she, says, she says you can make anything out of anything. That's, that's the challenge, to make anything out of anything. <laughs> Sorry, say that again, Hannah, Miss Ong. Oh, working overtime every time I see a new product. I just like to play. And I just, when I see something like that that I haven't used before, my, my mind's going like this thing, oh, I could do this, I could do this, I could do that. Uh, Alan's been making stuff.
um, Christmas stockings. Um, Jane's not a quilt hydrant, uh, but I've learned two things, at least from Sally Stevens this morning, about the foot markings and about the reasons for the directional pressing and piecing. Sally explains clearly and gives good additional information as she demonstrates. I shall pass that on, she may be listening. Um, Dawn, how difficult would it be to make a box bottom bag? We're going to do a box at 11 o'clock. Because I think that was your question from last week, wasn't it? That I never quite got round to finishing. Story of my life. Oh, with the PVC. Oh, afterthought with the PVC. Um, mm -mm -mm. It would it, it, it'd be exactly the same technique as we're going to do at 11 o'clock, but you really need to be in control of the... Um, of the PVC because it's going to want to fight back and it's going to want to stick to itself as well. But it is doable. I'd have the seam on the outside if you're making a box out of PVC because I think it gets a bit messy when you turn everything inside out and you're going to see all of the seams anyway so they may as well stay on the outside. Um, don't, whatever you do, think, oh, I'll stop it sticking by putting talcum powder on it because that's going to really mess up your sewing machine. If you hand sewing, fine. Should we make a brooch? Just me, I just need to close this up and put it out of the way, so just bear with a second. Right, I've, got, I've, had, I've had a challenge. A six minute brooch. <laughs> oh, come on, that's, that's easy. I've got my glue gun, so I am prepared. This isn't exactly ad hoc. Um, right, I'll, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just unplugging the iron and plugging in my glue gun. So bear with me, there we go, so I don't need you. We've got the glue gun in stock, but we don't have um, the refills at the moment. But we do have, oh, we've got them on the website apparently. We've got these brooches, these brooch things you see. In rose gold, how posh. What shall we use? Um, should we do a poppy? Hmm. Let's have a play with this. So any colour at all, I'm, I'm kind of thinking poppy-ish. Right, so what should we do? Right, so... Bigger scissors would help. Oops. So I'm going to cut a couple of roughs. Well, let's cut this off first of all. Again, this doesn't fray. So I don't need to hemorrhage or anything. And I'm just going to cut a few rough circles. Just make sure my, my glue gun's on. Five minute challenge now. No sewing in this one. Let's do another couple, but we'll do those smaller. And you could do it in any colour. I'm just thinking poppies because I saw the red, but you could make daffodils or anything else, really. Sunflowers would be nice. So I need that, that. Let's do that one a little bit smaller. Yeah, I don't need my circle cutter for this one. Because um, these are no way circles. That there. Tiny one in the middle. Right. How are we going to do this then? Because I want to do that. So let's do that. Oh, come here. The lead's not long enough. And then let's do that. Oh, that's work. Oh, I don't need all of these now then. Oh, no, it doesn't work. It's, it's dried It's dried too quickly. Um, right. We'll do that. Then we're going to do that. And then we'll do that. And then we'll do a little one. I know you can use a heat gun to get rid of these, but I love picking these strands off. <laughs> right, so I'm just holding that for a second. Then can we do that? Is it going to do that? I think it might, because it's still a little bit 
Oh yes, still a little bit malleable down there. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do a bit of that and a bit of that and a bit of that. And then I'm gonna save that little hold there. Yes, that's kind of worked. And then I'm gonna do a bit of this. I'd put some black beads in, in it normally, but I haven't got any. Where's the end gone? There we go. Let's chop some of this off. And I'm just going to make loops. I think that would work quite well. So this is thonging. You get three and a half meters in the packet and it's only one pound 99. So I think if I was putting beads onto tassels and things like that, or if I was making a very fine fabric drawstring bag, that'd be nice. But for now, this is going to be the middle of my poppy. Right, I hope this works. Let's chop that off there and then blobby glue in the middle. Oh, oh, quickly, quickly before it dries, that's gonna go in there. That's going to take a second to dry because I put a huge blob of glue on there. Like so. Right, so I'll just hold that while I get my pin. I'm covered in this stringy stuff now. <laughs> it's like cobwebs. Uh, I haven't got any green, have we? I could have done a leaf if I could have had some green. So I'd, I'd leave that a little bit longer normally. But then I'm going to take my brooch back. There are 10 in the packet. A generous blob. It's got holes in it as well, so I could have sewn that on. And that's going to go on the back there. Ow! That is very hot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of worked, didn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a thumb brooch. <laughs> so was that was that a good challenge? <laughs> was I within the five minutes? It's not actually quite dry yet. So you can make these for Poppy Day, but obviously you are still going to donate. Hmm. There's a hair on me. There we go. I've got a puppy. I'm just going to unplug my glue. Done so. Just excuse me a second. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Right. So, and no sewing either. See, that was that was quite a quick make. I'd have a, maybe a little bit of green, maybe some felt or something, and just do a, a couple of leaves on there. I think that'd be quite nice. Um, or with the the mustard um, pu, um, instead of cutting a wavy line, I'd actually cut into it. And that would make a nice, um, I'm not going to do it because I'm, I'm not cutting into all that fabric just to make a brooch um, like I did with that one. Um, but make it more like a fringe so it's a little bit more like a, maybe a chrysanthemum, that kind of look. Or if you've got the wavy rotary cutter blade, that would make something nice, wouldn't it? So maybe for a chrysanth, let's have a couple of circles. Am I all right doing this? Are we out of time? We are, we are out of time apparently, but... So, <laughs> I just cut into it like that, obviously a lot more carefully than I'm doing now. Whoops. And then maybe have circles in different sizes and I'll cut this a little bit finer as well. I'm just being very, very quickly and like so. And then put your beads or something in the middle and then give it a pinch. And it looks like a pom-pom. Well, there you go. Just think how many brooches you could make from half a metre of that. <laughs> Hundreds of them. <laughs> right. Um, oh, it's gone 10 o'clock now, isn't it? Sally's going to be knocking on the door in a minute. So, 
In the next hour, we have um, a circle cutter, an oval cutter, and Sally's going to be with us with lots of ideas as to how you're going to use them and how you're going to make accurate cutting. So I'll tidy my mess up and get rid of all of this glue that's all over the place. And we'll see you again in about five minutes' time. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more. Together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hello, my name is Jenny McCreary and I am a guest designer on Sewing Street. A little bit of an introduction into me and who I am. I've got some questions here I'm going to answer. Um, what do I specialise in? Dressmaking, 100%. It's my favourite thing. Made this wee guy behind me here. I absolutely love it. Um, bikinis, underwear, dresses, hair accessories. Does that count as dressmaking? Maybe not. I love homewares as well, to be fair. I'm not an expert in homewares. I would say I'm an expert in dressmaking. Um, quilting is the one thing I do not do yet. There's still time. I'm really worried. I don't want to get into quilting because I know that it is, uh, there's just so much to it and I'll get I'll get right into it and then might leave dressmaking behind. I'm not really finished with dressmaking yet. So dressmaking is my thing. I got into sewing. This is quite a common one, actually. It was for Halloween costumes. So I wanted to be the Tooth Fairy. My mum had a sewing machine, she knew how to use it, and I used it to make a tutu. That was the first thing I ever made. And then I realised I loved clothes, I loved fashion, and I then went on to study at university after school. So I studied fashion business, and now I do it for a job. What a dream. Something unexpected about me that is sewing related. Um, Probably back in 2011, I think it was, when the royal wedding was about to happen in April. It was Kate and Will's wedding. Um, a customer of the place I worked at the time challenged me to make the dress live. So nobody knew what the dress looked like and I made it in eight hours live while I was watching. So everyone else was having a nice wee day watching the royal wedding. And I was like sweating, it was roasting. Um, some newspapers came to watch as well. Yeah, that was interesting. I made it in eight hours. Uh, sewing tip that I would share with you guys. One thing that I share with my customers a lot is not to get too hung up on, on trying to learn everything. You'll never, you'll never know everything about sewing. It's impossible. There's so much new stuff happening all the time and new techniques and new tools and all that sort of thing. Um, just give it, a, give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? See, as long as you're using a fabric that's not like wild expensive, and it's not going to be too much of a loss if it doesn't quite go to plan, then just give it a go. You'll learn so much just by giving things a go. Um, my claim to fame, that is 
hard one. Oh wait, obviously my claim to fame is being a guest designer on Sewing Street, right? That's it. I do actually tell people that all the time when they say, tell me something unusual about you. That's it. Um, another claim to fame, a sewing related one. I own the UK's only sewing tuition franchise. I suppose that's nice. No one else has that. Um, I've, I've done other TV before as well. I've done some game shows. Um, you can look it up if you want. I have done some game shows before. I love TV. It's great fun. I am looking forward to sewing with you guys soon on Sewing Street. Christmas makes come in soon. I can't wait to know what that is. Okay, um, this show we're talking about rulers and whatever kind of ruler you're using and templates that you use um, will enable you to cut accurately. And I think some of the most difficult shapes to cut are the ones with curves like circles and ovals. So guess what? We've got rulers to help you cut the perfect shapes. So Sally's going to be with us in just a second and she'll show you how and why. And if you've got any questions or you want any advice or sh uh, Sally's going to be sharing some hints and tips with us as well. So this is your circle ruler. Um, these are creative grids. We, we feature a lot of creative grids because we like them because um, you have the grippy bits so the, the kind of um, opaque section that you see is grippy so it's not going to slip but what we also like about creative grids is the fact that you get a QR code uh, and that means that when you hover your smartphone or um, tablet over here when you've downloaded a QR code reader they're free don't pay for one that'll take you to a video and there will be somebody giving you a demonstration of how to use these and maybe ideas of projects as well if you're still not sure if you go to the creative grids channel on YouTube it's free for anybody to watch um, then there will be lots of advice on how to use these as well um, so if you have um, a stripology this is like the circle of the stripology world so you've got the teardrop shape at the side so you know that your rotary cutter is going to be in exactly the right position to cut those perfect quarter circles semicircles and full circles as well now that is 37 pounds 99 it's a good size as well it's a nice big size of ruler um, we also have an oval which is this one so again, you can see it's a quarter oval shape here, but Sally's going to show you how to um, actually cut your full size oval as well. And this is £39.99. You've got your um, 60, 45 and 30 degree markings on these as well, which you're going to find useful. And your ovals are going to be from four and a half inches to uh, 10 inches. 10 inches? They're going to be bigger than that, aren't they? I'd say double that, so up to 20 inches um, in size. So that's a big one. But there's loads you can do with a big with a big oval. <laughs> I'm thinking fold it in half, put a flap over, make a bag out of it. Make a big placemat, a dressing table tray. See? The bigger the better. That's what Sally says. We've got fabric bundles for you too. This <laughs> This is the Circle Savvy fabric bundle, aptly named because this, these designs and colours of fabric have been specifically made to cut into circles. That's why it's called Circle Savvy. So don't go, don't go cutting rectangles out of this fabric. Won't, it won't do. Just for circles, this one. As if. Um, three metres in total for your £19.99. £99. So a great stash of fabric um, for backing fabric, coordinating fabric, for making borders, for making bias binding. By the way, some on the website, only in pale blue at the moment, um, for £19.99. And these are half a metre in, uh, in width and, sorry, half a metre in length and 112 centimetres wide. So one, two, three, four, six of those in total. Whenever we put these bundles together, they do tend to sell out rather quickly. So if you love those colour selections with the pale lemon and the gold and the lilac and purple and sky blue and deep blue, uh, then I'd, uh, I'd, I'd be ordering rather quickly, personally. So again, £19.99 is your price there. And just to show you, we've got metre bundles as well. So if you didn't want all of those, that's what you're getting. It's that time six. So if you wanted just to go for the yellow circle savvy bun. <laughs> Not specifically for cutting circles. 
So you've got the uh, the buttermilk yellow and the the gold colour as well. These are just £6.49. That's, that's for a metre of cotton. That's good, isn't it? Mm. We did three ninety five postage all day, remember? So if you've already ordered something today, then... Um, then you, you, yeah, if you've got your PU from the last one, you don't pay any extra postage if you order any more there. <gasps> that, would, that would be six forty nine. dollars That's under £10 for half a metre of PU and your fabrics. Oh, yes. Um, these are the purples. Lots of it. So you've been ordering these at the beginning of the show, but I bet you didn't realise they're only for circles. They're only for circles, this one. So, circle savvy purples. Again, for £6.49, you can cut whatever shape you like, really. Just taking the mickey. There we go. And again, £6.49 for two of those. And then, so you've got the lilac and the purple. Circle savvy. And then, go on, circle savvy blues. Yep. Again for six pounds and forty nine pence. So when we bring you square rulers, it'll be exactly the same um, fabrics, but we'll rename them square savvy, <laughs> and then they'll be rectangle savvy, quilting savvy. Half a meter of each of those again. Are we looking at these patterned ones as well? So a touch of Christmas, but very delicate. Very delicately Christmassy, I think, this one. This is Lewis and Irene Winter in Blue Bellwood fabric. Um, so we've got the sycamore things, aren't they? Little, little helicopters. Uh, and the pale blue. I'm thinking frozen. Those kind of colours, isn't it? And these, again, are £8.99. See, these aren't circle savvy, so I don't know why they're even in the show. <laughs> what if I want to cut circles? And the second selection, or pairing, are the pinks. These are really pretty, really delicate, lots of detail in those. Um, and this is the Hummingbird Blossoms fabric bundle. So we've got the bright pink and then this really lovely petals, little flowers. And those are £9.99. Again, you get a, a metre in total there, itchy nose. Um, right, Circle Savvy Ruler. Lots of you are checking out for this one already. So this one is your Circle Savvy. I'm just going to put something pale behind there so you can see it. So it's a little bit like stripology, but that, that is straight line savvy. So this, <laughs> this is the, um, the circle option. So it works in the same way, basically, but Sally's going to show you that very shortly. £37.99, lots of you are ordering this right now. Well done to you. Um, brand new for you today, and again, it's Creative Crit, so you know you've got the quality, and you've got help at hand with the QR code there as well. Right, so let's have a quick break while we explain to you, or while Vix explains to you how you can place your order, and we'll see Sally in just a second. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. So welcome back again. Thank you. So we're going to get circle and oval savvy. Say oval savvy, we don't have oval savvy fabric, do we? <laughs> <laughs> 
But they are the most difficult shapes to cut, aren't they? Perfect circles. They and are, ovens. yes, um, def definitely. Even from templates, they are difficult to cut. So these are your options to cut either circles or ovals. The ovals rule is called ovals always. Oh, right, OK. Um, not quite sure why that is, because <laughs> <laughs> you can't cut an oval into a square, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, these are the two um, rulers that and I'm going to start what, with the circular ones. Why has it got two ones. on that? Ah, because if I fetch, I've got loads of samples here, so I'm going to just bring them all out, put them to one side, and I can show you. Oh, sorry for bobbing down there. We have got the light background behind it. We have measurements in inches on this one, and we have measurements in half inches oh, on this one. Oh, right. Okay, so these are inch measurements, 3 to 15, and these are 3 and a half to 15 and a half. Right. Okay, oh, that's so that's, clever. And that's the diameter of the circle. And we can cut full circles, we can cut half circles, we can cut quarter circles. I love I love the idea of having the half inches. I've yeah. um, I've used I, in fact, I've designed circle templates before now in the past with inch increments, but you can guarantee you want a half inch seam allowance or yeah, that's um, that's such a good idea. And because on the corner here you'll see it says fold line, which will be sh showing for the half and full circles. If you want to go for a quarter inch increment, you've got a second line there, so you could. Oh. Go, you'll have quarter inches as well, and that's the same on both. So you could go for five and a quarter, three that's and three quarters, that sort of thing. So, yeah, you can go right down to the quarter inch. So design for use with your rotary cutter? Design for use with the rotary cutter, and um, I found that certainly with the larger arcs on both the rulers, a 45 mil was perfectly fine. Some of the smaller ones, the three and a half inch ones, I did go for um, a, a 20, um, 28 mil blade. Okay. But if you take it slowly, you're fine with the 45 mil. I suppose you could draw through them and use you, scissors. You can. You, can, you can draw through them and use them as templates and cut them out. Yeah. You can also, obviously, with a different, um, you know, separate rotary cutter, you could use it for cutting card and paper as yes. well. So if you're a card maker, you can use both for, for that as well. Um, you know, for example, an over, oval aperture in a card. Yes. People like to do that and put a bit of fabric or behind photo it. Frames. Photo frames. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. So it's not just for, for fabric, you can use it for paper and card as well. So I'll leave those to one side and I'll just show you some of the things, first of all, that we can do with it. I use, um, well, in the past, practically anything round to curve flaps on bags and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Don't always get the right size. No. <laughs> and you, as you said, you can use it as a template then and then put that onto fabric and draw around it, do whatever yeah. you like. So you can do that onto card or, or what have you, or template plastic, all that sort of thing. So I've just bought a, a white background just to, to make it perhaps easier to see the pieces. So, for example, those are little half circles, and those are little quarter circles. And somewhere here we should I'm, have I'm feeling circle. Drunkard's Path coming along. Yeah, that sort of thing, perfect for this. So I've got lots of samples here. Those are full circles, and I've just appliqued one on top of the other, just bond a web that. Okay. So you can also, therefore, use these for cutting your bonder web shapes and your um, freezer paper shapes, oh. which I'll show you. Because if you want to applique this circle onto this one now, I've bonder webbed it, I would probably use a um, blanket stitch or some sort of decorative stitch to secure that. But if I wanted to hand applique that, then I would cut a freezer paper circle half an inch smaller and turn. So a needle turn? To needle turn it, yeah. So you can you, know, you can use it for those purposes as well. I would tend to keep a separate rotary cutter for the card and paper and freezer yeah. paper though, but otherwise you're good to go. And as well as being able to do 
simply those shapes, we can also do a set in circle, which is quite a, a tricky thing to do without having the rulers. All right, so how does that work? I will show you. So we start. Just to let you know, by the way, the, the Circle Savvy fabric bundle, only for putting circles. We've got 13 left. So those, those are going really, really quickly. Just, just let you know. So just to show, so I've got loads of, of samples, but just to show you how we can cut. You've gone circle crazy. Oh, I've gone circle crazy, gone oval crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was given the bundles of, of fabrics and just said play. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> so the principle is, start with a square of fabric, fold it into quarters. This is if you want a full circle. Lay it down. You can press it, but it's fine if, if, if you just uh, finger press. Lay the ruler on top. And you've got a fold here and a fold here, so you line that up with fold line on the ruler. And I'm going to pick, for argument's sake, the eight and a half inch curve here. I could actually get nine and a half inches out of that. So let's go for that one. So pop your, your cutter into the slot of the ruler, press down firmly, and round you go. And you have oh, look how easy that a was. perfect circle. That's fabulous. It's, it's brilliant. So <laughs> in, in, in the last hour, I was looking for something round and ended up drawing around um, a reel of um, ribbon or something. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to draw around plates and yeah. cups, and but it's with, with doing that, um, you tend to draw around it. And if you use a pencil, your line is nearer to the cup. Yeah. If you use a thick felt pen, it's further away. So they're different sizes straight away as soon as you cut them out. And then you're going to get scissor marks. Yes. It, it's really difficult, isn't it? Even it's with a template difficult. to cut a perfect circle with scissors. So I'm going to put it back on. Put the, the ruler back on to exactly the same thing, and I'm going to take out from the four and a half inch slot a smaller circle, leaving you with a donut. A donut. <laughs> <laughs> so with the um, this donut now, I can show you how to do the set in shape. Are you lost? The, the one I was showing you, which I've, I've lost. The setting one. Well, it looks like it's like that. It's a setting like that. It was here a minute ago. I do this all the time. But considering <laughs> we've got such a small space and you don't move anywhere. I know, I know. where really did it go? It, might, it can't be far. Just give me one second. Was it, it was the blue one, wasn't it? It was the blue one with pretty. Did, like it, like oh, we should mention, actually, that they both come with full instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Not as to what you've done with your fabric, but, <laughs> yeah. but for how to use them. Really good instructions. So again, it's got the QR code, same as on the ruler. And there is a demo from different ladies. There's um, the names of the ladies on here that have designed the rulers. And full instructions for whether you want to. Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. The quarter, <laughs> half or full circles. And you have your instructions here. With some measurements to give you just ideas for practice. Okay. But basically, you can go from three inch up to fifteen and a half inch diameter circle with the uh, the circle savvy one. That's a big circle, fifteen and a half inch. I don't have a it plate is. that big. That's it a bit is. of a spindle. It is large. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I could find that now. It's so nice. I'll show you the oval one afterwards. Anyway, I think, so, I think it was in this bit. It was in this bit, wasn't it? I'm sure it was. I'm sure oh, there it is. Go. Found it. <laughs> All professional and well organised here. <laughs> you were. I was. <laughs> uh, so that is what we're calling a set-in circle or an inset circle, where basically you've got no seams on the outer background and you've got a circle set in and sewn in to the centre. Right. Okay. The way to do that, I'll do it with this one, you need... Whatever the diameter of that circle is, you need the circle inside it to be half an inch bigger. So let's go back to where we did the 
cut and I think I did it on a four and a half inch. I'll just measure that to make sure. Yeah, I cut it on the four and a half inch. So I need to cut a circle to go in the center of that one, a five inch circle. Let's just pick a bit of fabric. Oh, that's probably not big enough. There we go. It does tell you what size fabric to cut as well for, you, right. for your circles. I'm going to turn this around now because that's a four and a half inch circle hole. I'm going to cut a five inch. That's going to make a, a really fun quilt, wouldn't it? If you just did oh, yeah. circles all over it. Oh, yes. And don't forget, you don't have to have the circles sort of all in a row or anything. You could, you know, you can offset them. Yeah. You could put um, little corner bits in. Oh, that's a nice idea. Yeah, there's all sorts. Once you start playing with it, honestly, it's quite <laughs> addictive. So there you go. So that, you know, a yeah. block. Not terribly well coordinated, but um, yeah. So there you go. So I'm going to cut my five inch circle here. I think that's if I've remembered the correct one. Whoops. Just caught my blade there. So there we go, there's your circle to go in the centre of the donut. And it's half an inch bigger because it's actually a quarter inch seam all the way around. Right. Okay, so that, that will fit. And I'll show you how to make it fit together on the machine. I always... I'm, I'm intrigued sorry. with this one because I can't think how you're going to do that without seeing top stitching. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> so the first thing to do is just make a mark at each of the fold lines at each corner and the same on the circle. And they're just registration lines. I've put the walking foot on the machine. Is that it's right? okay I can work with that yeah. I would use a quarter inch foot but that's that but we'll, we'll just we'll just go go with it. So, whenever I'm doing curves or circles, I always use a glue pen. Always, right. always, always. You can pin, and a lot of people do, and if you prefer to pin, please do. But I find this is the most foolproof method. I still can't see where you're going with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, wrong sides, um, yeah, right sides together, rather, if it was a patterned fabric. I'll just pin the two registration marks there. With my glue pen. Just go around the edge here. And just ease the outer circle. We don't have glue pens available at the moment, but they will hopefully be back in stock soon. So another one of those things that we just keep selling out of. So I'm lining up the next pencil mark and with the glue pen uh, we've just got the art glue the together. Just dropped. Now you can pin that as I say, you can pin it and you'll just take the pins out as you go. But I do like to use the glue pen. I will pin it just so that you can see. And then we carry on. Pin at that registration mark. Blue pen. So when I've done anything like that before, I'd, I'd use some um, a sewing interfacing, sew around the whole, turn the whole thing inside out, mm -hmm. and then top stitch the circle in. But I've not seen this before. Oh yes, it's very clever. So I'm lining up the next registration line. And ease those two together. I'm going a bit quick here but... Oh I've got loads of time. <laughs> got half an hour anyway. So <laughs> I've got to do the ovals. <laughs> okay. 
So we've got those pressed together. Pin again. A bit more glue pen. Doesn't matter whether you put it on the inner circle or the outer one, whichever. And these are bias edges, so try not to stretch, stretch it too much as you're applying the glue. Next registration mark lines up with the next quarter. And press together. Again, you could do this a bit neater when you've got a bit more time. And finally, the last little bit. So this is what happens on a Thursday here, then, is it? <laughs> lots, lots of um, education and, and new techniques and things. Oh, I love new techniques mm. and I love rulers. Okay. We don't so. do education on a Sunday. <laughs> we just have a lark about because there's nobody upstairs. <laughs> So that's the two pinned and glued together. Okay. Then we go to the sewing machine and ideally with a quarter inch foot, but, but we'll go for it on I forgot to change on it. Here I just need to move the needle. Just bear with me a second while I move the needle. It's probably a quick way of doing this, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> When you turn that, do you mind just moving the best press out of the way so we can see Sorry, what it is? Sorry, yes. <laughs> I'll put that over there. Thank you. I often use best press with circles as well because, oh dear, it's got to be a quicker way of doing this. With circles, you are using bias edges and it does help to ease them as you're sewing them. Um, when you're pressing them rather with a little bit of best press, but I'll show you that in a moment. Okay. So we go to the machine. I'm as best as I can with the take your pins out as we go. Just thinking what I do, what I do with all of these circles, though, because the, the, the first thing that springs to mind for me is placemats. Yeah, placemats, coasters, yeah. Um, obviously circles in, in blocks, in quilt blocks, drunkard's path. Cushions, pin cushions. Yep. Drawstring bags. You know those are drawstring bags that are like a full circle and then you put loops around the edge so that you can lay like, say all of your makeup out and then you just draw the whole lot up when you want to put it away. Or just bases for bags. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah storage tubs. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going at this a bit quick, but hopefully you'll see the idea. And we keep going. And as you're sewing, you're actually just sewing two flat pieces of fabric. Yeah. Okay. So I've pleated it a little bit because I was going a bit quick there. <laughs> it looks terrible. But that <laughs> is what it would look like. <laughs> But we would, we would press it anyway. Give, so. given, given time and the right foot on the given machine. Given time, right foot. <laughs> I'll squirt it with a bit of best press. <laughs> but you will see, hopefully. <laughs> Force it back into shape again, Sally. Yeah, you can always press anything into shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't do that too brilliantly. No, that's a really interesting but technique. But that's the principle it's, anyway. Yeah, I've never seen that before. <laughs> If you want to pleat it, of course, you can. <laughs> For a hat or a... <laughs> we'll just... That's lovely. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? Never made anything so well. <laughs> well, best press. <laughs> and here's one I made earlier. <laughs> so, <laughs> pretty rubbish. <laughs> But hopefully you see the principle. You're, 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 you're gluing and pinning. Um, I mean, you can see my seam is just rubbish. <laughs> Perhaps I should have put the quarter inch <laughs> foot on. <laughs> but that's how you inset the circle. 
And I promise you, it does look better than that if you take the time. <laughs> I'm really impressed with and that. And the same Thank principle you. with the half half circle, which you may want to go on the edge of, um, of, a, of a quilt panel or just a decorative on a bag. Loads of, loads yeah. of uses it, it, for that. Around a quilt, you can make it look like a scalloped edge, can't you? That would be quite pretty. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you show us how to cut quarter circles and, and half circles as yes. well? Yes. So, what do with them? With a quarter circle... And I would suggest you only cut through at max four layers of fabric. Okay. Um, I found that it went above that it got a bit more tricky. So if we just want to cut a quarter circle, we don't have a fold line. If you want to cut a quarter circle that is accurately a seven inch circle, then you put it on the fold line of the ruler. But if you want to have a seam allowance that you can then turn in, move it to the quarter inch seam allowance line. Right. So that would work if you're going for something that's on the corner of a quilt and you want a seam allowance of a quarter inch. Do you do your um, your quarter circles the same way with the glue that you did with the, the yeah, full circle? exactly the same way, exactly the same way. Yeah. Um, okay. And it is much neat. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear it's taken me hours to prep this demo as well. <laughs> just blown it never mind so yes yeah, exactly the same way you just pin and glue and i would really 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 recommend the glue pen if you have got one yeah. um but pin if not so we're just going to cut a quarter inch here let's just pick a seven inch Perfect. And that's your quarter inch circle. And if you want a half inch, bigger piece of fabric, half circle rather, fold your fabric in half and then placing your fabric on the fold line again if you want it to be a specific set measurement. If you want an extra quarter inch, move the raw edge up to the quarter inch seam allowance. Right. All this is explained really, really clearly um, and also in the demos as well that uh, you'll, you'll see with the QR code. And they make a much better job of it than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go and cut again. It's cutting the six inch. We have a half circle. So we've got a quarter circle, a full circle, and a half circle there. And half of the stock is sold out of the circle. I had loads of those, especially for the show. So again, you can go from three inch up to 15 and a half inch, um, but you can also do the quarter inch increments as well if you want to. Okay. So I have set, done some other examples here. This is just to show, this isn't sewn. That's something else you could do. That's a nice um, design, yeah. That's, you know, that just for a block, just for a quilt block. Yeah. And if you have a fabric that perhaps has a motif, then you could put that in the centre to, to make a pretty, pretty little centre as well. So there's lots you, can, lots you can do with just those circles. So that doesn't look like a circle at all, but it's done using the cutter. Yeah. By cutting corner off the fabric first, turning it around and cutting the inner circle to create that effect. So, what else have we got here? I've shown you that one, that was just um, to show a bit of applique. And you can always add other bits on, little bits and pieces on, as I was trying to explain earlier, just decorate your block in whatever way suits you really, or your bag or what, ha what have you. So you can create a block just with the circle ruler or the oval ruler. You don't need any other ruler really other yeah. than to cut your squares. And you can make some lovely designs. So put those to one side. 
It's nice that you can do some very small pieces as well, you know, the scraps of fabric that you don't know what to do with. Yeah, you can. Um, so I've got a piece mm -hmm. here that's already got some cut out of it. You can still use it to cut more out of. Yeah. More, more quarter circles or half circles. And it might be nice if you're making um, a project, maybe for a child, that you cut lots of circles and shapes and ask them to lay out where they would like them to go and how they would like to go and then, and then you can just stitch them on for them unless you know, they're old enough to be able to do that themselves. But they will quite enjoy, I think, the laying out or doing a bit, a bit of a jigsaw effect. Yeah. So, yeah, just more examples, really, of, of those. What else did I have? That one, again, was just bonderwebbed on. So unlike this one that was sewn in, that one is just bonderwebbed on. And you do a decorative blanket stitch or whatever around that. I do like a blanket stitch for a plique. I do. I do. Even hand, actually. Even hand yeah. applique. So I'm not a very good needle, needle turn stitcher at all. <laughs> <laughs> Even worse than that thing that's on the floor. <laughs> So, shall we do... Oh, and here's another example as well. So I cut a circle out of the patterned fabric, then I cut four quarter circles and just bond a web those on. Just another design yeah. idea, really. You can, you can play for hours. And you have been. And I have <laughs> been. And I have been. You know, and again, if you want to make it a bit more complex. And I wouldn't necessarily mix these colours, but you can do. Yeah. So, show us the oval, what would you do So, the oval. The oval. Mm. Same principle. Move all the circles out of the way. Keep some fabric handy. See, don't, well, there aren't very many oval um, accoutrements, and in my kitchen certainly, that I could draw around. No, so you don't really I don't see know. oval templates. No, I mean... Casserole dish, maybe? I don't know. Mm. Yeah. So I'll show you now some examples of the ovals. <laughs> You've got tons of stuff. I know. I know. Got more circles under there. So this is the ovals. This is what you can do with the ovals. You can make quarter ovals in the different sizes from, that's from three inches up to ten inches. And that's the radius. Okay. Okay. And the radius is, the length rather, is one and a half times the radius across this way. Right. Okay. And again, in the instructions, it explains a few of the measurements. So again, you can go up to quite large sizes. And I did a similar thing with this one. Oh, I like that. Where I cut four quarter ovals and took a circle out of the middle oh, so you can mix them together yeah, yeah. which I thought idea. well why not I mean you, you may well want to to do something like that you know mix and match you may want to applique a circle over in a different fabric and oh oh <laughs> just <laughs> oh make one of those now <laughs> so that wow. That is a whopping oval, which I thought would make almost a quilt in itself, particularly yeah. if you had a feature fabric in the middle here, and that's your frame. That would certainly do as like a little neonatal baby quilt type yes. thing. Place mat, table mat. You can imagine, um, you know, as I say, have your, your pretty feature fabric in the middle. And again, you can add other fabrics to it that's in circles to create more and more yeah complex patterns but that even on its own without the frame is a, 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 tw a 20 inch length yeah. oval it's perfect dinner mat yes lace mat yeah um so what else have i got here to show so in christmasy fabrics you can start making yeah. up your um, christmas table settings yeah that's now. what I, I, i'm Really thought would be a really nice idea. That's the oval I cut out of there, so you can still use that for something else, yeah. and then decorate it again. I've just put um, bonderweb on the back of that, but you can make 
all sorts of little arrangements. With your, that probably doesn't measure quite right, but you could have a, another half circle there, another yeah. half circle there. Um, let's try those, that might be a better, yeah, that's a, a little bit better fit. So the, the, the options are almost endless, yeah. really, what you can do. And I think if you see something in, in, a, in a magazine or in, in a pattern, it's got circles or ovals in it, you don't need to feel daunted anymore. Yeah. Because the instructions tell you what sizes to cut. So as long as the pattern says you need a, a circle of 10 inch diameter, then you can then you can cut it. All you need to do is cut the circle half an inch larger so that you can turn in the seam allowance. And remember, you can use this for, um, for paper crafting as well. It's not just... Paper craft as well. I think an aperture on a card in an oval. Yeah. Would look lovely. Absolutely. And then just another, just a little silly example, but how you can create. See that, that pink square? I think I would have thrown that away. I wouldn't have thought oh, to no. that. Don't throw it away. <laughs> if you're going to use it as a frame, like I have here, then you need that to be a slightly wider yes. piece of fabric. Otherwise, when, when you've turned in the quarter inch, assuming you were hand sewing it, you might lose yeah. the, the, the raw edge inside. So, but that's, if you're just bond webbing that, that would be fine. Um, do you mind if we go back to the circle cutter? Because nope. it's very busy for the circle cutter <laughs> at the moment. Um, what, what sizes can we go from and to again with so this one? So, we can go... Oh, Leslie's messaged in. Hi, Leslie. Hello. And she says, hello, Debbie and Sally. Hello, Leslie. Um, how great to see both of us together. That's nice, thank you. Thank you. Such a wealth of talent. Oh, stop it. <laughs> That's just Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> what a wealth of talent at the tables, but no ego at all. Oh, we, we are right divas when we're not on air. Absolutely. We're demanding. Oh, yes. <laughs> she, there's lots, she appreciates the prep and um, demonstrating how the products work. There's a lot of work. Sally's been working days and days, considering she's made up this whole quilt for the show earlier on, and all of the step-by-steps, and all of the bits for the block, and then all of this. It's, yeah, it does take a time. It does work, take a time. It? It's great yeah. fun to do, but yes, it does take a time, and... and um, you know, for a one-hour demo, you can spend eight hours, Yeah. you know, but I love yeah. it. So we were talking about the sizes. So again, we can go from a three-inch three diameter. So on the ruler, it says diameter in inches. So the smallest is a three-inch. And the largest on this size is the 15 and a half inch. But because you've also got the quarter-inch inch, inch quarter inch seam allowance lines you can go quarter inch increments as well and you can make circles half circles and quarter circles there are also other lines on the ruler these angled lines 22 and a half degrees 45 degrees and another 22 and a half degrees why 22 and a half because oh, it's half, half of 45, 45. No. yeah no i was not good at maths either and the reason for those is, now I don't know if I can show you an actual example. Let me see, I probably can. Just bear with me a second. So let's say I wanted to sew two pieces of fabric together. I'll just pick any two. Okay, they don't even need to be the same size. So I'm going to just sew these together as you just normally would. Are these, is this on the videos as well? I haven't, haven't watched the videos. It's in the instructions. In the instructions okay. It's in the instructions. I'm not sure if it's in the videos. Um, there are several videos. So I've just got two pieces of fabric joined together with a seam. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like an octopus with that <laughs> out of control here. <laughs> So now what you can do is line these lines off with your seam allowance. Right. Okay. To create, let me do this. Oh. 
So a penny, penny's just dropped. Yeah. In an so, uh, oh kind of manner. Yeah, so let's say we want to do that on the 45 degree angle. I'll just fold it in half on the seam. I would press it. Pop that on there. Actually cut out. Obviously this isn't a properly cut rectangle, but it will just show you. It's just my straight bit here, straight edge there. Never cut towards you. So there you can see you can create something oh. like that. And because there are the different segments, you could create it really quite complex. Yeah. I think there's might be an image in here. So you did um, a semicircle, it's almost like a, a fan effect, is that right? Yeah, so if you oh, can see right. something like that. Genius. And that would make a nice... Um, oh, I can do it with the oval as well. Do it with the oval. Fabulous. The circle. Yeah. I'm just thinking a pincushion with a button in the middle. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Or again, you know, a nice big placemat with different fabrics in the yeah. different quarters. And all you need to do is just bind it. So is this... I mean, it's quite inspiring, isn't it? Maybe you're looking at this thinking, like I am, I would, I'd never have thought of doing that before. And if you do have a stash of fabric that you, you want to use up, even if it's, um, you know, something that's already been cut into, like Sally um, oh, yes. showed you. Yes, you've still got, you know, you can still make use of it for the circles or the ovals. Um, and as I've explained, there are a lot of instructions, detailed instructions yeah. to explain exactly how to do it. That's similar to what I was doing before using the registration marks. I think on the demos they show you pinning. But I do like the, the, yeah. the glue pen option. Yeah, gives um, it accuracy, doesn't it? Yeah, and the same principle again of gluing and setting it in, but with a much neater effect. Fabulous. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm, I'm really surprised how versatile these are. I mean, I know how much I use circles and things to round off corners, but there's so much you can do with these. Um, when are you back again, Sally? Oh, yeah. um, August now. Oh. Right, it's not far away. It's, it's, it's about no? the 7th of August or 10th of August okay. or something. Yeah. Are you with us over Christmas? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, <laughs> Christmas is week after next. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I, I don't even know what my projects are, so maybe. Oh. Well, Hopefully well. they will be ready for me to collect on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> don't be too hopeful about, about that. Oh, and just one other thing, if I could just say, if you don't use the exact markings on here, and say so you've got a little bit of fabric, fold it in half, I'm really doing this quick now, and you just... You can just move it around at any angle you like. You don't have to line it up with the registration marks. So you can create yourself little shapes like that. Oh, petals and leaves. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's, um, that's done it for me. I think that's... <laughs> I, I wouldn't have thought of doing that. So, play. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. When I first saw the rulers, I thought, what am I going to use those for? And... Look, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> look at that. That's a ready-made table. <laughs> well, take that one home with you. Um, thank you so much. I've had a lovely morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we're going to see you again in a few minutes' time, but if you're new to us here at Sewing Street, let's just give you a reminder of how you can place your order. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping.
Right, so let me just give you a recap of the rulers that we have. So this one is a circle ruler. Again, I'll just put some paler fabric behind there so you can see it. Isn't that a clever idea? I love it. I've never, to be honest, I've never been a huge fan of lots and lots of templates because I also was, there is something in my stash. There's something in my kitchen that I can use to draw around. But how accurate is it when you're cutting with these? And half inches in circles, never seen that before. That is genius. And being able to use your rotary cutter, you're going to get a much more accurate cut than you're trying to cut with scissors. Even with a template, um, your rotary cutter is going to be more accurate. And I love the way that you've got all of these different dividing marks on there so you can, you can make different designs with different coloured fabrics as well. And size-wise, nice to go up to 15 and a half inches. That's, um, that's a pretty big circle, isn't it? You could even make a, a cushion out of that kind of size. So that's £37.99. Remember you've got your full instructions included as well and you've got your QR code so um, that will take you to um, a YouTube video specifically um, relating to this ruler. But if you have a look on the Creative Grids YouTube channel then they've got all of the, the rulers there as well. Um, and of course Creative Grids it's non-stick so it's got it's got grippy sections on it which is really important isn't it when you're cutting details with a rotary cutter when you can get quite close to your fingers you don't want your ruler slipping so that's your circles and this one is the ovals and the way that you can do petals and leaves and have pointed i wouldn't have thought of that but you can so you can have your perfect ovals or you can use your um, you know make the, the leaf shape that Sally just showed you and again this goes up to is that 20 inches in total in the radius so that's 10 inches up. that's huge so picture frames remember it's paper crafting as well as your um, as well as sewing so it's a really useful versatile ruler and these are really nice quality as well I've seen them before not these ones um, heart shaped ones particularly that I have demonstrated previously and tried my hardest not to show where it's been broken. Only because I was told to, as my job was on the line. Um, but these are really nice quality. Um, and again, easy to use, very clear instructions, lots of instructions on the, on the leaflet that comes with it, and you've got your QR video code as well. That's £39 and £99 if you wanted to order that. We've got We've got a fabric that is specifically for cutting circles out of. So don't buy it if you've gone the oval ruler, it won't work. Which is this one. Um, the Circle Savvy Bundle. We've got the gold and the yellow, the purple and the lilac and the turquoise and the deep blue as well. Um, this is, that's a good price, you know, for all of that lot. £19.99 for three metres of fabric. So each one of these is half a metre in length and you have the um, uh, 112 wide. If you wanted to just go for the golds and the yellows, we can do that for you. So that's a metre of fabric for six pounds and 49 pence. So those are your two colors there. Sunshine colors those, aren't they? Really pretty. We can do the same with the purples for you. So just the two purples, purple and a lilac. And those again are six pounds and 49 pence. And then finally, we have the blues. So turquoise and royal blue for six pounds 49. I use a lot of blues, I like blue. I think blue's my favorite color. I only realise that when I look around my fabric room, my fabric room. <laughs> and you see how, how many blues I've got in there. It just seems to be something I'm drawn towards. But yeah, use blue a lot. Um, again, at £6.49, that's for a whole metre. That is a good price for 100% cotton fabric. And it's nice quality cotton as well. OK, anything else that you need, have a look on our website, which is sewingstreet.com. Anything you'd like to order, it's uh, 0800 001 4433. We have another hour coming up live in just a second. Um, we've got the brand new Gutterman threads. I'll take you through those in just a second. And that box, Dawn, I'm going to do your box. It won't be in the PU, it'll be in fabric. But we'll do the box with the box bottom in the next hour as well. I was going to do something else as well, but I can't remember what that was. But I've got a couple of minutes to have a think about it in the break. So I'll go and put my thinking cap on and I'll see you again shortly. Hello, my name is Sally Stevens. I'm from Worcestershire, a little town called Upton upon Severn, which is a lovely little riverside town. And not far from there, I also have a little sewing studio. So I can work 
and leave all my mess left out um, when I'm preparing projects and quilts and so on. My speciality is in fact quilting, patchwork and quilting, and I probably started that when I was about 14 years ago. So as I often joke, that was only seven years ago. In fact, it was rather a lot longer, but I've always enjoyed crafting and patchwork really hooked me and I love it. So now then, what can I tell you? Some, something you may not realise about me is that although lots of you have seen me many, many times on, um, on sewing TV and classes, because I, I teach as well, um, I also do a lot of unpicking. So don't be afraid ever. If you have to unpick things, so do we. It's not a problem. We all have to start somewhere and sometimes you get a bit cocky and think, oh, I can just do that without pinning or without this. And then you think, ah, I should have paid attention to my own words. So some sewing tips for you. That's one. Keep a seam ripper handy. That will always be your friend. And um, another one that I think is very important, whether you're a beginner or more experienced, when you're sewing something, particularly for the first time, a new technique, slow down. There's no rush, it's not a race. Have a little practice with spare fabrics if you've got them before you use your best fabric that you've just purchased so that you get your techniques just right. But also slow down, take your time, watch what you're doing, think about what you're doing and read the instructions. That's always very useful. So what can I say? I've been asked to say what my claim to fame might be and I would have to say in all honesty, being on Sewing Street. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making. Oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new. And I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it. And you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye.
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello, my name is Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Hello, welcome back again. This is our last live hour on Sewing Street this Thursday morning. And we've got loads of stuff. We have got loads of fabric for you to have a look at. Um, we've got some brand new threads that you haven't seen on the channel before. And I'm going to be making a box um, due to popular demand from Dawn. She's very demanding. Um, with a drawstring top. Hmm. Not just any old box. Oh, no. So I have no idea where to start with this lot. We've got loads of it. So we'll start with bags instead, shall we? Um, you've seen the quilt as you go bags before, but they've always been bundled up with fabric. But this time we're bringing you quilt in the go um, projects um, without the fabric. So you can choose your own fabric. These are a great a project to use with fabric rolls or jelly rolls if you have any of those. So this is the Sophie tote bag and it's quite a sizable bag. So this is what you're going to be able to make. Um, so again, you can see how fabric strips will be perfect for this one. And actually we've had loads of people asking for the bundles on their own, but did you not like our fabric that we put with them then? If you've got your, if you've got your own fabric, you use your own fabric. That's fine by us. Um, but this, I think this would be nice in different colours of denim. Or if you're upcycling or repurposing something, then that that would be a, a good idea. So you could even use because if you because you've got the wadding behind it, you could even use finer fabrics. So if you've got something like um, bed linen, which can tend to be quite fine, you have that little bit of stability. But it is a wadding; it's not a foam; it's not firm. So you've got still a nice soft bag. Um, on here, it's it's like painting by numbers or quilting by numbers. Um, because you're going to cut out your strips according to your instructions and then it's almost like a stitch and flip technique and the webbing for the handle is also included. So that's Sophie. This was actually demonstrated on the 4th of April. So if you wanted to have a look um, back on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Oh, 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 we haven't had these on their own before now and I'm being asked to ask you if you check out quickly. So obviously very, very busy for these. So that's your Sophie. This is Alexandra, so it's a similar kind of deal. What's in there? There's oh, lots of bits and bobs in here. Um, so you're going to need your strips for the outside. You can either use your, uh, your jelly rolls and fabric strips or you can cut them into, into two and a half inch strips. That's entirely up to you. And you're going to need some lining fabric as well, but you won't need your interfacing and you won't need your, your handle um, stiffener because those are included in the price. Look at the colors on there. I just think black and white would look really stylish, wouldn't it? You don't have to go for the, the whole rainbow of colors. Um, these are the kits that we put together previously. Very lovely colors. And it's a good size of bag there as well. So this was demonstrated on the 28th of April. April? What language was that? April? 
How is it? Thursday, isn't it? That's my Thursday voice. On the 28th of April. Um, if you wanted to have a look on our YouTube channel, again, take a look back there and see it demonstrated. Was that Liverpool? I do apologise. Just, you never know, what, you never know what, what dialect I'm going to have when I walk through the door in the morning. I've been Texan. I've been... It's just weird. This one is the... Um, what are we calling that one? Quarters you go so by number. Tory, there we are, right in front of me. There's probably aren't going to be on the screen in a minute, isn't it? Um, don't have a sample of this one to show you, but you can you can see the idea here. You've got the triangle, which can create a chevron effect as well, and that is fifteen pounds and ninety nine pence. Again, you've got your, your pattern, even your seam allowances. Everything is printed onto the batting, the wadding, and you've got the um, the strap in there as well for fifteen pounds and ninety nine pence. So I'm hoping that those of you that have asked to see these on their own have managed to get hold of them. If you know somebody, then give them a nudge now. Right. Got loads of fabric. We'll have a look at that in a second because we've got some brand new threads for you. Now, this is Gutterman thread. I like a Gutterman. I like a quality thread. Um, but this is, um, they call it a denim thread. It's actually a thick thread for top stitching. But the kind of thread that you do see if you're making a pair of jeans. Um, so here we have um, two, four, six, twelve of those all together, and really good, strong quality thread. I would suggest personally that you invest in um, a quick and pick to open the thing, um, a top stitch needle, as it's thick thread. On a universal needle, it may drag a little bit. We don't have top stitch needles on the website at the moment, so you need to find one of those. A top stitch needle has a bigger eye, so it allows the, the thread to, to flow. It allows the thread to flow. If I talk slowly, I'll be able to get my words out, won't I? Um, allows the thread to flow through freely, is what I was trying to say. Um, but you can actually see how thick that thread is. So it's nice and tough and strong. If you're hand sewing buttonholes, this is going to be ideal for you. Um, if you want a decorative top stitch, then this is perfect for you. If you're making jeans, then um, these kind of colours are the traditional Western jean type um, colour options. If you're bag making, you want to do some top stitching around the flap, these are perfect for you. But the, these, are, these aren't the kind of threads that you're going to make seams out of. Um, don't use this in the bottom bobbin, just use it in the top. You can use a regular weight of thread in the bottom. And uh, this is more of a decorative type of thread. Unless you say you're doing something like buttonholes and you really want to strengthen it, then that would be a good idea there. So £24.99 is your price and it is 100% polyester. We're talking about polyester with Sally earlier on. Poly polyesters these days aren't like you remember them as being like nylon, shiny, a little bit stretchy. They actually feel and look like cotton because they've got a matte finish, but with polyester, it adds to the strength. Um, polyester, polyester threads tend to be a lot stronger than cottons in general, so if you're making something that you need to have the strength, then you've got the strength with those. Um, oh, oh, Alexandra tote bag cork as you go. That's gone. Sold out. Well done. Still got the other two for now. Did tell you they were going quickly. We have a couple of more Gutterman threads. These are cotton. They're 100% cotton threads. So these are the autumnal type of colours. I shan't take them all out. Should I take them out? No, you know what they're like. Um, these are NXW, NXZW74 if you wanted to place your order for those. There's a um, 100, is it 100 metres on each one? And there are 10 of those in total. These are lovely colours. So we, called, we call it pack four, but you do, you do get it. It's not a pack of four, it's just called pack four for some reason. I don't know why. I would have called it autumnal myself. Um, so dark browns all the way through to off-white and gorgeous orangey colours there as well. Um, and at £14.99, that is such a good price. That's £1.49 per spore. 
so I expect to pay double for that um, with other brands. And again, it's Gutterman, so you've got that high quality thread as well. And it's Mercer-sized cotton, which means it's been chemically treated. Um, so it behaves a little bit more like polyester. That gives the cotton its strength and it helps it to remain colour fast as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a cotton, it's 100% cotton, but, but it behaves like it's polyester. And, you know, £14.99 pence for your price there. Try it. I think we, we all have our favourites. Um, as I was chatting with Sally earlier on, I tend to go for colours and I'll pick it up. That's the right colour. Start sewing and then it, half the time it doesn't even enter my mind whether it's polyester or whether it's a cotton. But if it's a cotton that you specifically want to work with, this is a very affordable way of, of trying it out. Um, sometimes sewing machines have a preference of cotton. My sewing machine doesn't like coats. Put coats in there and it will, it will throw itself out of the take-up lever in a suicidal manner. It, it just, just doesn't like it at all. I don't know why. Um, so I'll give it a try. At these kind of prices, it's just such great value. So here, um, we've got the more cool tones. So warm coals. I turned into a chicken this morning. I don't know, don't know what's, what's happening. I don't know what's happening. £14.99. And this is pack five, but you still get ten. So these are the more the cool colours. So the greens, that's a lovely colour there, isn't it? I do like that one. And this looks like black, but it's a very, very dark green and very, very dark blue. Fabulous colours. I like to have, um, well, I've got hundreds of, of different colours of threads and they are all different colours of threads because I always like to have the right colour for the job. So if I wanted a coordinating or a contrasting colour of thread, I know that I've always got it. Um, so th that it's nice. It's just nice to have such a selection so that you know that you've always got something that's going to go with the, the project that you're making. These are the cotton ones again, 100% cotton, Mercer sized again, so treated to give them longevity and colour fastness. And those are £14.99, that's £1.49 a spool. I'd happily pay double that for cotton. So that is great value. I'm going to get some of those after the show. 10 reels with 100 metres on each. That's a lot of thread. No, there you go. And remember, they're 100% cotton. A lot of quilters like to work with cotton, don't you? Well, there you go. We've got affordable cotton there as well. There we go. So, should we tackle this fabric? Right, we've got a lot of bundles for you here, as you can probably see. So, we'll dive right in and start... I've got a favourite, I've got a favourite, I have got a favourite. I love these two colours. So, this is FBL J38. And these are just so pretty. Oh, I've got thistles and poppies. I never noticed the thistles last time I brought you this. But I love the colour the color combination with the that bright green which really picks up on the colour of the leaves and the centre of the flowers. Isn't that really pretty? Now these are £10.48, this one's Daisy May Country Life Fabric Flowers and then we've put a solid with that as well. So you've got a really nice combination of colours there. I'm tempted to even cut these out and use them as borders. Maybe even just around a plain... Oh, You could make your own ribbon. Would... Oh, that would be nice if you could cut out... Um, an inch either side of the floral fabric, then you could make your one inch bias binding and you just get a little row of flowers done. Oh, should have done that, shouldn't I? So bias binding. Or the band around the, the centre of a little girl's dress, that would be nice. You could make a belt out of it. Top of a pocket would look nice. If you imagine that's your fab plain fabric and you've just got a little border of flowers across the top. That would make your pattern fabric go a long way, wouldn't it? I just think they're gorgeous colours. So that's £10.48. There's half a metre in each of those that are 112 centimetres wide. Um, I also, I also kind of like these. Very different, I know. But we've got spots and tans. Um, SN, SNLJ60. I don't know why so many numbers and letters. That's a good flesh tone if you're making dolls, but you've got the spot with it as well. 
pretty colours. Um, bag linings, um, if you've got um, a bolder colour on the outside and you just wanted something that's not quite plain to go on the inside, that would be really nice. But as I do like, we don't see flesh coloured um, fabrics very often. So if you are making dolls, then I should, I'd, I'd have that for the doll and then make her, make her a frock or him a shirt. Again, that's £7, that's good. £7.48 for those. That feels like a bit of poplin. Let's have a look how wide it is. So it's nice for dressmaking. But if you're making for yourself, it would be a very short one. It's up to you. Do what you want with it. That's that one. Trying to keep tidy, trying to keep tidy. Um, we have... <clears throat> oh, the red spots are nice. Nice combination. And LDLJ14 for those ones. Thinking cushion covers, bags again would look great with these. Maybe the storage box that I've got coming up in a bit that I'm going to make. I'm going to make mine in blue. Um, half a metre of each again. That's That feels like a poplin. And then you've got a cotton. I don't mind a bit of contrasting fabric. So the same kind of weight. And again, £7.48 is your price there. So we've done that one, we've done that one. Should we do a bit of Liberty? Have a look on the website for all those. There's loads. Oh, that's a nice one as well, though. Oh, no, I'm going to do that one instead. That's going to confuse everybody. Um, so we've got NFLJ38. Aren't those colours lovely? That's really pretty. That would make nice dolls' dresses. But of course, your patchwork and your quilting, your home wearsing. Um, this is £10.98. You could make a whole, or a big doll, you could make a lovely outfit for a big doll. Um, £10.98 for those. And then I'm actually going to use the blue and the green to make my storage box. To move the, do I have to keep all of these in pairs because I'm messing everything up now? This is lime and cyan. Sounds like a... A 70s singing duo, doesn't it? Lime and Cyan here on top of the box. Um, £6.98 is your price for that. It's a good price, isn't it? <laughs> we're, just, we're just thinking, what would Lime and Cyan look like? And um, Hannah Producer is saying feather boas and a cigarette holder. Bit of glam. Maybe a bit of frou-frou with kitten heels. We like a bit of frou-frou with kitten heels. Mm. We talk about frou-frou on a Sunday morning. That's a Sunday morning topic. When management aren't watching, we don't do frou-frou on a Thursday. That, that wouldn't be right, would it? We'll have a grown-up day on a Thursday. It's an educational day on a Thursday. I'm just going to wind the creases out of this. I don't like to start working with creased up fabric. Personally. Oh, that iron's nice. I mean, the iron, the fabric irons nicely, not that's a nice iron. <laughs> right. So if you want to drop me a message, by the way, this is the last live hour this morning. So it's um, studio at sewingstreet.com if you want to send us an email or you can pop a little something on the Facebook page like Alan did with all his eight hats. So that's your Facebook page, it's Sewing Street TV. There is a fans page as well, which would be lovely to have you join that, but I'm looking at this one at the moment. Um, or you can send us an email, which is studio at sewingstreet.com. All right, I'm going to iron the blue one while we're here as well. Um, where are we? We've got half an hour or so, plenty of time. Right, so I'm going to have, I'm going to make it, I'll make quite a small box because that's going to be quicker. Um, so I'm going to cut six inch squares and I'll have one of these as a contrast with the drawstring bit around the top. I'll do that in the green and the lining in the green as well, I reckon. Right, so I've got all these labels on my sewing machine. We have to remember what fabric I've used, that's why. Can't see a label on that one. Never mind. Right. 
So I'm going to cut the salvages off first of all. Got the ruler, got the rotary, and let's chop them off. And then my six inch squares, let's line that up with that. I do that, and then I do that. Oh, this is going to be a diddy one. Maybe I should have done a bigger one. Never mind, we'll have a little box with a little drawstring. So for the actual box, I will need to neaten that off. Five of each of the squares. So that's two, four. Oh, just enough. Maybe it was a good size to use. So that's going to be the outer and my lining. And then I'm going to do a little drawstring around the top as well. So there's the label. Um, let's have a think. So if I'm six inches on each side, that will be four sixes. That's 24 inches in length. And I'm going to leave a gap down one side, which is going to make it easier than measuring really, really accurately. So I need two pieces of this measuring. 24 inches that's folded in half so that will be plenty down that way so let's neaten that off and make it straight and i'm going to make that if the if the box is six inches across and six inches that way and i want a drawstring that meets in the middle and then i've got a little bit of an allowance to put the ribbon around there then i would say that strip needs to be so six inches five four about five four and then four and a half inches welcome to my mind it can be a very confusing place to be sometimes and 24 inches all the way around but I've got 24 inches minus those seam allowances but there again I want to put a seam down the edge so I'm going to go 24 inches so that's cut there that's on the fold so we're 12 inches down that way which is there that's that that's all the cutting so Let's do this. So we're going to have some H640 on the back of the outer pieces. So we will have the, the blue as the outer pieces. And the green as the lining. The green as the blue and the green on the top, please. The outer pieces. The green as the outer pieces. This will all make sense when it starts coming together. My inane ramblings. Like so. So I'm not ironing over the, um, over the glue bits. I'm holding that in place. I'll go over that again in just a second. And I need five pieces of this. So four for the sides and one for the base. And a lot of steam. H640 likes steam. Some of them don't. And there's my base. So we'll cut all of these out and then I'll just whiz the iron over the very edges. I don't normally use my rotary cutter with fleeces and the like because I don't like picking it all out of my cutting mat. This isn't too bad to be honest. I was cutting some toweling yesterday. I had a little toweling project to make. And that was a devil. It's still in my mat now. It's really embedded in there. So I cut both those and that. And this, and then again, I'll just take the iron over. A little bit of applique would have been nice, and I could have put some of Sally's circles. And, no. she, she took them all with her. 
<gasps> She's left a quilt behind though. There we go. And that, so I'm just going up to the edges where I didn't before because I didn't want to get glue on the iron. Doesn't matter if it's not stuck down, I'm going to sew it in a minute anyway. Right. So let's sew these together first. Um, I've got grey thread in there, but I think we're okay. What are we doing? No, I don't want that. Don't want to resume last pattern. Don't want that seam allowance either. I'm going to switch it off and on again so we default back to a straight stitch that's in the middle. Because Sally was using um, a quarter inch seam allowance. No, I don't want to. Okay, off we go. So around about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Doesn't need to be exact as long as it's all the same. So I'm just going to sew four of these together in a row, first of all. I keep forgetting it does it automatically. I don't need to put the foot down on this. We do have a lot of bundles on the website of fabric, by the way, so it would, it would be a bit of a dull show just going through tons and tons of fabric, wouldn't it? Um, so do have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com and um, you can have a look what we've got for you so so I've got four together in a row before I sew it into a square I'm going to put this around the top let's have a think how we're going to do this so that's 24 doesn't need to be 24 need to do that we're going to do that we'll chop it down a little bit Where have I done with those now? <laughs> Honestly, scissors just, it's weird. Right, so this needs to be a bit shorter. And I'm going to sew around the, the top and both sides, but leave a little gap near the top, near the top of the size. The, near the top of the... So, little gap there. And cut. And then I've left a gap at the top of the side of about an inch. And then all the way down the long side. Yes, better. Ooh, I love a fast machine. And then a gap here, again, of about an inch, and there you go. And then we'll cut across the corners and turn it the right side out. I'm not cutting through the stitches, just the corners off. Turn this through. So again, I've got a hole in the end there. That is deliberate. Mm-hmm. And let's give that a press. Want that tucked in nicely. Um just use that. I just want to make sure that the seam on that hole that's it, sits nice and neatly. We do have tools to do this, but I don't know where I put that either. Like that, and then we'll iron that. I've never made one of these before. I'll be interested to see what it turns out like. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just making sure that the seam is right on the edge there. Like so, and then I'm going to put a stitch line about half an inch across there and that's going to make a channel for the ribbon to go around the top to make a drawstring. See now it's making sense. Still not? Okay. Make sense in a minute. 
Look at that machine go. Right, then this is going to go right sides down on top of this bit. So that's how it's going to look when the box is made. Do I need that there? Do, yeah, that will do. Yeah, that's fine. And just stitch within the seam allowance. So I'm stitching quite close to the edge on that one. It'd be nice if it works, this. Make a nice gift bag. Or we could do a huge one for your fat, fat What was that? But now. And then I'll sew the final two sides together to make a square. And then we'll sew the base in, and I think this is what Dawn wanted to know about. So, so I've got that. And then I need to sew that in there. Now the thing is, um, and I'll do this again when we do the lining, it's very tempting when you put a base in to line up the edge with that seam there. Don't, you overlap it. So this section is actually marrying up with the seam allowance here. And then I'm going to start sewing a quarter of an inch in. So my seam allowance is about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to start sewing a quarter of an inch from here. And I'm going to sew all the way around in that manner. So pin if you want to, but a little box like this you probably find you don't really need to. So I'm just making sure again that when I come up to the next corner it's overlapping a little bit. Stop with the needle down. You can feel when you're on top of the seam. So stop at that point. This gets kind of in the way. As long as where I'm actually sewing is nice and flat. Don't worry too much about this bunching up. And again, overlap the end of the fabric with the seam. Stop with the needle down, up, turn around, and line up the edges. And back down this side. Stop over the seam, needle down, turn around, and back down. Put down. Right, right into the corner. We need to do exactly the same with the lining in a second, but we need to leave a gap in the lining so we can turn it the right side out. But you'll be able to see in a minute what I'm doing. So, if this isn't the colourway that you want, by the way, we've got lots of other bundles and colour options on the website on sewingstreet.com. So now I've got nice square corners with the um, side seams metering up right in the corner. And that is going to have the drawstring bit around the top. But we need a lining because we don't like a raw edge. So let's fold that back down again. We'll come back to that in just a second. And I'm just trying to figure out those measurements again because I think this might actually work and you might want to make one. So I'll have a think about that in a sec. Right. So just like before, we need to sew all four pieces together to make the square shape first. Could be somewhere to keep your jewellery, make a nice little gift box, haberdashery in your sewing room. Make it in any size you like. And that's number four. You can make it an oblong shape as well, as long as the... Um, so you can make an oblong that way or you can make it oblong that way. It doesn't have to be squares that you're making, but squares tend to be easy. Because all the pieces are the same size, basically. Right. 
Dawn still awake? She requested this, but she'd say she'd been working quite late, so she might have a nap on the sofa. So I hope, um, hope she's still watching. Right, and then just the same as I did with the top or with the outside. Again, overlap those edges so that you're starting to sew about a quarter of an inch in. And this time I'm going to leave a gap. So I'm going to leave the gap in that side. And to the corner needle down, turn around. You could use a heavier um, interfacing. So if you've got um, a foam or just a heavy interfacing, that would work. Um, but I think it does, you don't want a floppy bag. I would use some kind of stabiliser in there. I could make it out of faux leather in the PU. Apparently it's my favourite fabric. So I either put it on all my shows. Right, side three. We're not, we're not too far finishing yet. It's not bad going, is it? Or maybe I'll sew slow. Rethread and start. Oh, I've run out of thread. Um, what colour shall we go for? Blue would work, wouldn't it? You're not going to see any of these threads, so it doesn't really matter. Right. And I love a machine that tells you when it wants something. One more thread. And there, keep going there. I think we go across there and over there. That one too. Oh, come here. Oh, now then, a lot, a lot of you have found already when you go onto the website, if it's the solid colours that you want, that we've bundled together. Many of them are available by the half metre as well. So if you do need longer lengths of fabric, if half a metre isn't enough for the project that you want to make, then um, just check out the website. Loads on there. Right. I think my hole I left may be a little bit small. So there's the outside of the box and that's right side out. And then the lining is going to stay inside out. And I'm going to push the outside inside the inside with the right sides together. <laughs> I know what I mean. And line up the seams on the corners. And then we'll sew all around the top. So literally just sew all the way around. You can see I've got the hole in the bottom there, which I might be able to squeeze it through. We'll see. And here we go again. Oops. And just lining up the corners as we go. Well, that wasn't very good lining up, Deborah. Don't ever do that. You might rip your fabric. Right. Now I'm lining up the corners. And so. That's better. Plain fabric like this as well. You could put um, some applique on there. You could put initials maybe or numbers and letters to make it look like a... Um, a cube that kids play with, a building block kind of thing. That'd work. So all the way around the top. Back to the beginning, almost there. And then we'll pull it all through that tiny hole that I left. It's a very small hole. I'm trying my hardest not to make the small hole any bigger. Come on. There we go. 
so then we will pull the sides of the opening away from each other took the frayed ends in and I'm just going to sew across that gap to close it like so keep going to put the foot down it does it itself and it lifts the foot up and then the lining goes inside I'm going to iron that I'd, I'd normally top stitch around there as well, but I don't think I will because we are running out of time. Well, we've got 15 minutes, but we've still got a whole load of fabric to show you. So I'll just iron it. So my squares were six inches square each. The flat bit that goes around the top is four and a half inches by... Um, by, where's the numbers on here gone? Not two, by 20 inches. If you wanted to make one the same size. It's that. I would also just press over the corner seams to make that squarer, just to help it to keep its shape. Hello, Julie. She says, morning, Debbie, morning, Julie. This would make a fantastic Christmas gift box. It would actually, wouldn't it? It would be really nice. Um, Eco-friendly and reusable. Absolutely. Already got that one. Right, I need a... <laughs> I need a safety pin. I must have a safety pin somewhere. Just excuse the top of my head again and my rummaging around. Hannah producer says that she keep her tiara in, in this bag <laughs> to keep it safe while she's travelling. Oh, we must have a safety pin somewhere. Right, bear with me. I'm going in the box. I will have a safety pin in here somewhere, I know. I've got everything in here. It needs a bit of a tidy, actually, doesn't it? I've got ribbons, I've got zips, I've got my glue gun. We found one first. Um, I've got wonder clips. Oh, I've got a bias binding foot on there. Um, it's my rotary clips. Everything but a safety pin. Fancy not having a safety pin. I need to improvise then. What can I use instead of a safety pin for threading that through? Bodkin would have worked, I haven't got a bodkin. Sorry, my mind's spinning now because I'm trying to think of what on earth I can use to thread that ribbon through there. Well, prep for this demo. I'm, I'm blaming Dawn for this. Who's left the glasses in there, lot? Somebody, can, somebody can't see a thing. Okay, I'm going to have a go with the wonder clip. That's not, no, wonder clip's going to be too big. Mm. So what I would do, if I'd have thought this through properly and brought a safety pin, would be to then thread the ribbon through the top and then you've got a drawstring, so that all gathers up. You could put handles on it as well, so that's all kind of gathered up like that. See, that would have been nice if I could have finished it, wouldn't it? Oh, thank you. Honestly, there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing as I'm... Um, as I'm talking to you, I think there's someone on the shelf as well. There's someone on the shelf as well. Go to the overhead. So, so I'm going to tell you. Um, so while you're looking at the bag, cats snuck out, kicked me out of the way so that we can distance, come around the back of the set, found the pins and gave them to me. So that's teamwork, isn't it? That's what we do here at Sewing Street. We work together as a team. 
and now I can finish it. Because I kind of like this and be ashamed not to finish it. It would be nice as Christmas fabrics. We've got Christmas coming up at the end of July, going over to August. I think we've, we've got five days of Christmas coming up. Perfect time of year for Christmas. Only a few hundred more sleeps. Right, um, when you come to the end, oh, there we go, it's come out. Invariably, that will go into the seam, so it might be a little bit fiddly to pull that through. There we go, look, that worked. So now I can gather it up. Chop that off at a jaunty angle. And then tighten the bow. There. What do you think? Nice little gift box. And again, you could um, leave this longer and make a loop if you wanted to hang it up. Um, you can make that in any size that you like. And you could even put little handles on the side. You need to do that before you put the um, this bit on. So handles first and then that bit. Rather pleased with that. OK, it was worth waiting for though, wasn't it? Don't you think? Let me take you through what I've used. So that was the lime and cyan bundle. You could do a similar in scar in, in these two. Raspberry and Sky. Oh, I could do a set of them, couldn't you? So have one in Raspberry and Sky, and then we'll have the one in the Cyan and Sky Blue, and then you could have one in in Coral and that one. So that I think that would be quite nice. And of course, you can make more than one. You could probably make two of those out of um, the two half meters. Actually, you could probably do three, to be honest. So that's six pounds and ninety-eight is your price for those. I just think that's really great value for money. Um, then we have the pinks. So again, half a meter of each one of those for your six pounds ninety-eight. So love that coral colour. That goes with so many things. It's really pretty. So those are the the plain ones. We have. Tiger Tiger fabric somewhere under here. We do have Tiger Tiger fabric. It's right over here. There we go. No, it was there. These colours work really well. So you've got the Tiger Tiger and the Jade. They're lovely colours, aren't they? And again, it's this one um, that you really have to look twice to see the tiger there. That's, that's really lovely. So that's £9.48. Again, you've got two half metres there. Um, oh, we've got so many bundles. Have a look on the website on, um, on sewingstreet.com and that will take you through the bundles, but you'll also be able to see um, which ones of these that we have available to you by the half metre. Um, Oh, with the bags, with the quilted you go bags, we have two left. This is Tory. Um, these have the patterns printed on the wadding. So it's like a stitch and flip kind of thing that you do, um, just using small pieces of fabric. And the webbing for the handles is also included in there as well. So this is the style. Really busy for these. We haven't offered them to you before without a fabric bundle. So that's the first time. So you choose your own fabrics, basically. Um, you will need for one tote a quarter of a yard of each of five to seven fabrics and you'll need another quarter of a yard of binding as well just to give you an idea if you're oh and two or three yard two to three yards of lining fabric as well that seems a lot of lining fabric but that's what she says that's what June says then that's right isn't it um, this one is Alexandra oh sorry Alexandra sold out hasn't it so we have uh, Sophie, still got Sophie. So you can use these strips for the bottom bit, you'll need a wider piece of fabric for the top. Um, so she's recommending for this one, feature fabric and accent fabric, a quarter yard of each. A quarter yard of six to ten fabrics cut into ten two and a half inch strips, so that could be a fabric roll. Quarter of a yard of binding and two to three yards of, um, of lining fabric as well, which just, that just seems a lot. Um, 
if you're making the box, by the way, we, we're doing the flower of the month. I love this one. You could make a huge box, which was going to be my intention this morning. Um, but I hadn't got, I hadn't got enough because I'd, I'd use foam for this one t to really make it stand up and I hadn't got enough. So I made a smaller version, but you could quite easily make a box using this as the, um, in fact, what I was going to do, because uh, I've got the whole collection now of, um, I think we've done four so far, so you could have one of these on each side and then use the strips at the side for the base and the linings as well. Or you could just use a plain white. You could make, oh, if you're giving a plant as a gift, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Make a gift bag or a box with just this on the front would be nice. I've made cushion covers and used the strips to add borders to make it even bigger. I've made bags in these, but you could make maybe a kneeling cushion for the garden. Um, maybe use some of the PU on the bottom bit so it doesn't get damp as you're kneeling down. You could, ah, oh, now then, oh, ah, uh, just a little bit. Um, that would be another project. So next time we do this, Hannah, I'm going to make a boxed cushion. Right? So I'll, I'll, try, and, I'll try and remember that. <laughs> I'm sure someone will remind me. Because two, four... Yeah, so I can make quite a deep boxed cushion with a zip in the side as well. Might have enough to put some piping around it. And then I'd need some plain white fabric to put on the back of it because there won't be enough to do that as well. Hmm. That will be a nice project to do. All right. In the 8 o'clock show this morning, we brought you a couple of bundles of fabric to make the quilt behind me here that Sally made. And they have been very, very popular. And these are they. The pattern is included as well. So this is your Daisy May. So that's the one behind me here on the wall. And we have the floor. These are all fat quarters. There are eight fat quarters. That's very, very dark blue. It's really lovely quality fabric. It's quite new to us here at Sun Street, but it's really soft. You can, you can tell a high quality fabric. Um, we've got strawberries and flowers more flowers skeleton flowers but the gray works really well with it and you've got the cream and you've got your instructions included as well all you will need is wadding we've got that on the website and you'll need some backing fabric and binding as well so all of this for 67 pounds 99 pence you've got four meters in total there and then your second option is the moda which are these and this is your favourite. We're down to single figures for this one now. It's £65.99, considering a quilt top, a Moda quilt top for £65.99. The instructions you can use again and again with different types of fabric. You're looking at squares and quarter square triangles, so it's a simple quilt to make. And basically, you're making one style of block. There are instructions in here for making different sizes as well. Um, so you could do the baby, you can do the lap, which is the one behind me, or you can do the bed quilt, um, which is even larger. And I personally would be making cushion covers out of the blocks as well, because they're actually quite good sized blocks to do that with. So we've got kind of a classic and a contemporary, haven't we? So not a springtime and an autumnal tones, cool and warm. <laughs> up and down left and right um okay i'm going to see you again on sunday we like a sunday morning bit of a bit of a sew along oh hi morag more oh, i was morag that was falling asleep i said i'm telling everyone that dawn was asleep but it was morag um but I, oh i read that wrong i thought it said you blacked out but she says i've been back out i'm now snuggled up on the couch watching you i love it when you're on oh thank you join me again on sunday um, from 8 till 12, no idea what we're doing, but we'll have a look, we'll have a bit of fun anyway. Um, shall we have a look what we're doing tomorrow? Shall we? Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Do you want to know? 8 o'clock, Creative Grids. We've got the 45 degree diamond and Lone Star bias ruler. Oh, I do a lot of biasing. Um, at 9 o'clock, it's the block of the week, block two. At 10 o'clock, with Love from Italy, Attic Windows with Wendy Orlando. And Fabulous Fabrics again at 11 o'clock. 
and then you'll see a repeat of the eight o'clock show this morning with the array quilt that um, Sally brought you this morning at eight o'clock. So anything else that you'd like to order, have a look on our website on sewingstreet.com and, um, and join, join that um, Facebook fan, Facebook. Where's that come from? Where's Facebook? I don't know. That wasn't Liverpool, Leon. So it's funny, isn't it? It's been a strange day today. The machine I've, that I've been using today is the 780 Plus. Um, this is an incredibly fast machine, but it's really intuitive. It lets you know when it's running out of thread. <laughs> I, I just think that's worth buying it for. It's a lovely, a lovely quick machine. We've got lots of machines on the website from Janome, uh, Elna, same thing, and. Um, and duking machines on there as well so do check out your website and check out your baskets as well lots of you have things in your basket that you don't go through to purchase and we stop pinching things back after a while there is another of our another of our another hour of sewing coming up in just a second and i shall see you again on sunday morning bye bye